Good evening and welcome to the Select Board, uh, Board of Health meeting for Deerfield uh, at the Deerfield Municipal Office's main meeting room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on October 9th, 2019. And I will um, open the meeting at 6.05 p.m. Um, our first order of business is to approve the minutes of <coughs> previous meetings. And I have October 24th, 2018. September 5th, 2019, and September 11th, 2019. I move September 5th and September 11th, 2019. Um, I have not read October 24th, so I can't. Okay. I have, uh, I don't see October. I didn't, I neglected to put it in the packet. I oh, believe I okay. did send it through email, but I didn't include it. I didn't. All right, so let's, let's hold I'll on. I'll second that. We'll hold on that. So I have one revision to um, Octo uh, September 5th is that, um, my name is not Trevor D. Ness. <laughs> what? <laughs> Although some may agree, oh. but. Um, <laughs> I didn't catch that. <laughs> yeah. So just if Got people it. think we don't read these things, we catch little things. I didn't catch that. <laughs> so um, okay. with that uh, revision, I, you second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, Let's see, do, and next on the agenda will be select board reports and announcements. Oh, we can wait on the 24th till next week, right? On the October 24th? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Great. I want to make sure. I, um, I just, I just want to say um, thank you. Ago, so. Yeah, wait, we can wait one more week. Yeah. I just want to say thank you to um, Kimberly McPhee and uh, Chris Curtis for coming for the MVP and hazardous mitigation um, public meetings because um, those are required. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we got a lot of information and we had some good ideas come up, uh, yes. especially your idea of, with uh, further the engineering on Bloody Brook. So I, I think that will be, we have some ideas to meet next week. That'll be great. Um, I probably am not, we're not going to make a decision because there, October 30th is a funders forum at um, FERCOG from 2 to 4, and I was planning on going, and that's. Um, trying to get more information from Brian Keller on whether we should go with the small bridge program or the culvert program cuz it's Keller. actually actually is the next MVP round isn't due until November so we can put off making that decision um, okay but we'll decide how to approach that cuz i i mean but hopefully by then we'll have some idea if the culvert cost is over a million dollars or not mm -hmm. and then that will weigh in whether we go to the small bridge program or stick to the MVP program. Right. Okay. So I had um, just, I, I went to the uh, FERCOG um, on, I guess it was last Thursday maybe, for a workshop. So um, the uh, DLS, Division of Local Services and DOR, um, part of DOR was there to talk about budgeting and um, creating a calendar around budgeting and uh, I thought it was very informative. It's, I've, I've been to several, but each year, <laughs> You go, you know more, you know, it takes a while to learn all the aspects of this job and budgeting, but it was interesting to talk about the calendar and, um, you know, really zeroing in on the missions of each committee and where they, um, you know, I guess if you continue to do this for a while, you start kind of molding into kind of what you think the committee should do. And it's always good to get a revision back of what our job really should be when it comes to budgeting and setting the priorities. And so it'd be great to have, I, I know other towns were, doing mission statements for each individual committee. So the Finance Committee, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee would relook at their mission, rewrite that mission if they felt it needed to be, and just kind of zero in on what their task should be in budgeting, and, um, and then really look at the policies and update any policies and try to change that stuff. So I know we had talked about doing financial policies a long time. I think we had somebody when I first started from uh, DOR came. You, um, you, had a, you in fact had a grant and you developed some draft. Um, right. And I'd love to jump back grant. on that and just kind of zero in on, on that a little bit okay. again. And, and But I'm excited for budget season to come up and, and talk about really? where we, yeah, I, I am. You know, I, I know people are like, oh. It's a year round but thing, Trevor. It is a year round thing, but oh. it's, you know, right about now as you start really kind of looking and planning for the next year, we have an amazing amount of work coming up and exciting things going on in town and I'm really excited to kind of start moving the town forward on some of these initiatives. Speaking so. of exciting things, I, I just want to thank you for, um, we were attended on Saturday a um, uh, day long um, 
well, it was Slickman's mm -hmm. Association for County Meeting, and it was a great opportunity for networking and a lot of good information also. It was, yeah. We, I, I always get excited when I do go to It is. Things. We planned that. Uh, when we went to MMA last year, our conference down in Boston we go to every, um, every January, we, um, a couple of local select board members regionally t started talking with other members, and we felt there wasn't a lot of connection between the different boards, like the Franklin County Selectman Association has been strong for a, lot, a long time. Um, I think it was Hampshire's kind of falling by the wayside a bit. It's hard to get people together. Everyone's so busy, there's a lot going on, but you really need regionalization and to kind of complete your job and, and to do the best for your residents. And so we started talking about doing a larger uh, four county Western Mass um, Selectman's Association, and then we pulled in the regional planning and MMA were pulled in and the state select boards association came in and so we had um, Senator Lesser, Senator Comerford, Senator um, Hines. Hines was there and Paul Mark and Natalie Blay and so a lot of, a lot of um, regional players were involved and we talked a lot about economic development and, um, and rolled out the rural policy, um, um, rural policy plan that they've been working on and kind of getting out. So that was pretty exciting to see all that. We got to network with the uh, Secretary Mike Keneally. Keneally. Um, so as we have an empty building, um, Cheney Beat, you know, that we're, you know, that, that's empty and we need to kind of get economic development in there. We just last Monday, thanks to the residents, purchased the property back at the Oxford um, property and we need to economic development for there. So it was really good to kind of do all that work. It cuts your weekend in half, but it's important work. So. Um, so that, that's what I've got. Um, anything else? I guess we've got a couple minutes, and then I guess you guys could. Well, we, maybe can, do I'll the, read the, we can do the Board of Health stuff. Yeah, great. Okay. Do you want to? Well, I just, I just want to um, thank Paul Klinginger for coming um, to our tick night last Tuesday. Um, we still have, uh, we were able to get um, another CDC grant through, and M M it came through Mass Department of Public Health. So we have subsidized tick testing still available um, through the grant now. Um, we don't have to use town money, which so it's wonderful, $15. If you pay $15 as a person, you, um, the town pays for $15, and now this grant is doing it instead. And so instead of 150 And this is the time of the year that the grants become, I mean, that the ticks become a lot more right. uh, numerous. So right about now is the time that you want to be, you know, it's checking second, the dogs, checking the kids. Yes, it's the second peak season um, activity. It's from mid-October to December. And we really need you to be village, uh, village, vigilant, vigilant mm -hmm. and, um, and, and keep prevention in mind. Do your tick checks because this is crucial as we go into f flu season because a lot of the early Lyme um, disease mimics flu season. So, um, so come get your flu shot on um, Saturday, October 26th from 10 a.m. to 12 uh, 12 o'clock here in the town offices so that you know that you are not going to get the flu and then do tick checks so you don't get the ticks. Mm -hmm. But if you have a tick, please send it in. It only uh, UMass labs are now um, processing the ticks within 23 hours. So you have ample opportunity to um, get your treatment within a week. Mm -hmm. And if, you're, if your tick is not infected, then you don't have to do anything but you have your piece of paper to go to the doctor to get the proper medication to handle whatever your tick is infected with. We, um, just to give an update, we have about 36% of our ticks, it's been pretty stable that have Lyme disease or infected with Lyme disease, but what is very concerning is um, in the last four years, we've gone from 2% to almost 10%, or like 8.9 or something like that, um, of the co-infections. And if you have a tick that's infected with Lyme disease as well as some other, one of the other viruses, then what happens is it's really magnified. And even if you get your three weeks of dococycline or amoxicillin or whatever the doctor feels is your best treatment, it's not enough. So you need to have your information within a week to go to your doctor and get the right combination of drugs so you do not have long um, term Lyme and um, other disease impacts. 
He was able to leave off, I think, uh, quite a few identification cards. I don't know if we have them on the table or in our uh, office, but if anybody needs or wants to stop by, there's a great little thing that tells you kind of when they're, you know, small or um, they're different age, ages and size and deer ticks and, and other it's ticks. Good you can recognize them. So please come in and grab those. So again, the, the, the flu clinic, which would be Tuesday, October 15th from 9 to 11 at the South County Senior Center, and Saturday the 26th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. here at the town hall. Um, so with that, I'm going to um, open our meeting for the um, notice of public hearing. The Deerfield Select Board notice of public hearing. The Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing to consider an application for a license pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 148, Section 13, made by uh, George's LLC to store 60,000 gallons of propane gas on property located at 198 Mill Village Road, Assessor's Map 94, Lots 4, 5, 9, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 in Deerfield. The hearing will be held on October 9th, 2019 at 6.15 p.m. in the main re meeting room of the Town Hall located at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. A copy of the license application has been available for inspection weekdays here at the office of Select Board 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield during regular business hours. So with that, we open the meeting on time and we invite, invite you up. So thank you. And just introduce yourselves and thank you. Hi, Dick. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is Richard Evans. I'm Good a morning, in Northampton. Good I afternoon. represent uh, the, the applicant, mm -hmm. Go Grizz. Uh, this is Chris Chamberlain from Berkshire Design, our civil engineer on the project. And we have two other visitors tonight, uh, John Wall and uh, uh, Kirk uh, Fisher, uh, Baker, I'm sorry, Kirk Baker, both of whom from uh, Somerset Engineering. And Chris will introduce them in a few minutes. Sure. Um, so what we just wanted to do was to give an overview of the site as we're planning it, um, some of the background uh, that led us to this application, um, and then just a, an overview of the process that we've been going through for, for several months um, on this effort. Um, so we've been working on this project uh, for over a year now um, and on the propane storage question since um, early in the summer. Um, I'm going to refer to our site plan here for just a moment just to orient Please. everyone with the site. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Speak uh, I'll speak loudly. Thank you. Uh, so uh, this is the site. Uh, Mill Village Road is along the front side here with the uh, Mill River, uh, just or I'm sorry, the Deerfield River. This is the um, and this is Chatham's Crossroads to the north. Uh, the parcels uh, that are part of this project that have now been combined into uh, very good uh, into a single property. Um, include these agricultural fields here as well as the main greenhouse parcel and two properties that were formerly number 200 Mill Village Road and number 196 Mill Village Road. These are all now uh, a single property. Uh, and the proposed plan As a very quick overview, um, this is uh, the conversion of the existing greenhouse formerly occupied by Pioneer Gardens for cannabis cultivation. Um, the entirety of this, so it's approximately 110,000 square foot greenhouse is being converted on the interior for the new grow operations. Uh, main entrance to the site is here off of Mill Village Road uh, with uh, parking lot and um, uh, access area uh, for, uh, for in and out of the site, um, as well as a proposed processing building. Uh, this project has been under construction for some months now. And the reason that we're here tonight um, is this portion of the site here, where we are proposing uh, two 30,000 gallon uh, propane storage tanks, which will um, be the primary fuel source for heating most of the greenhouse um, to keep our crop thriving. Um, so that's, again, uh, that overview of the site. And then what I'll leave up here 
is uh, a zoom in um, of the area in question. Again, to orient you, this is that new processing building. Uh, this is the greenhouse right here to be renovated. A portion of that greenhouse, I'll just note, was demolished in order to meet zoning setbacks. The general agricultural greenhouse could be within 10 feet of the property line. We had to back that off to 25 feet um, for the uh, cannabis cultivation. These are the two storage tanks as well as an access road for fill trucks and also general maintenance with a fill point here um, and then some equipment to support the extraction of the propane from those tanks um, into the greenhouse uh, as well as uh, bollards for vehicle protection. And then um, this uh, down here is just uh, an emergency generator for emergency power in the event of a power outage um, to keep the lights on. And so with that orientation of the site, um, again, a quick summary um, of the need that we have here. Uh, so the, uh, the crop uh, is a warm weather crop, so particularly in the winter, but also in the summer uh, in order to control humidity. Uh, there are a number of gas-fired heaters as part of the greenhouse. Um, the existing natural gas connection to the site, of which there is one, mm -hmm. supplies us with approximately uh, four and a half million BTUs per hour at maximum um, into the greenhouse, which are being utilized. Um, in addition to that, on our peak day, which we anticipate to be in, in a very cold snap in the winter, mm -hmm. uh, we have the need for about 18 and a half million BTU per hour to uh, mm -hmm. maintain the warmth to keep that crop um, alive. Uh, and thriving in those winter months. Um, and uh, so then the question becomes, you know, what uh, is the storage necessary in order to uh, reach an acceptable level of reliability uh, from, from uh, the owner's perspective? And so uh, when we start with the 60,000 gallons of total storage, uh, the first thing to note is that those tanks actually cannot be filled to 60,000 gallons. Uh, the maximum that the code allows them to be filled to is about 85% of that, or about 50,000 gallons. Um, and then uh, when the tanks get below about 25% full, uh, it becomes problematic in cases there are practical issues with actually um, removing the gas from the tanks. Um, when the consumption level is this high, and I'm, I'll, I will say I'm a civil engineer, I'm at just about the edge of my understanding on some of the technical details of this, but. Uh, um, but this is, uh, you know, my research and talking with the designers, um, is that uh, the gas, which is liquid in the tanks, needs to be moved at such a rate that it needs to be pumped and then actually vaporized uh, mechanically in order to be useful. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so there are, uh, there are issues pumping that, uh, what is essentially a super cooled gas, because it, it wants to be in a gas form, it's actually in a liquid form. Um, and so uh, the industry standard is to keep that tank at least 25% full. So then we look at what the working storage volume is between full at 85% and empty at 25 percent um, and so that leads to and I, I wrote this in a letter that was submitted yep, to the board I, have it. Uh, I believe that leaves us with uh, 34 35,000 gallons of what I'd call working volume and the 18 and a half million BTU of heat that we need to get out of that gas uh, is equates to a consumption of about 5,000 gallons per day that is not every day. That is not most days. There, in fact, may be years where we never need to remove that much gas. Um, but it, from the owner's perspective, we're planning for the potential of a nor'easter coming in, crippling the infrastructure and the ability to get trucks in and out of the site, while at the same time ushering in a lengthy cold snap. Um, and so that, uh, at that 5,000 gallons a day of consumption, that gives us about seven or eight days of supply uh, which is, you know, in our opinion, a comfortable margin um, to ensure that we can keep this crop alive, uh, which has a significant value. Um, so that's, I, I'm laying all of some of those numbers out just to uh, give an understanding that these are not arbitrary numbers that we came up with, that, that there is a, a basis for it. Um, and then finally, I just want to overview some of the process that we've been going through. As I mentioned, we started early in the summer. 
um, looking over this project um, thus far, uh, our initial uh, stop was to the fire department to submit the plans that we've prepared um, and get reaction from them. Um, I've walked the site a couple of times with Chief Melnick uh, to go over uh, some of his philosophy as to what he'll be doing if he ever has to respond to an incident at this site. Um, in addition, uh, the uh, mechanical engineers have prepared a fire safety analysis, which is part of the permit process uh, later on down the road, looking at things like response time um, and uh, location of water sources and that sort of thing. Uh, and so the chief and I uh, went over uh, some of his thoughts and concerns about the site. Um, and so while initially the site was designed to meet all the code requirements of the fire code, uh, the chief requested a number of additional um, features of the site that he'd like to see. Um, those include uh, maintaining aisles uh, at the north end of the greenhouse in the existing condition. There are 10 9,000 gallon cisterns that are used to collect rainwater that's used for irrigation. The chief sees those as an excellent backup water source to the municipal water supply. So we intended to keep those anyway. We are also providing the fire department with a connection to those cisterns, mm -hmm. uh, as well as an access road on that side of the site where a tower ladder can set up and pump water out of those cisterns to shoot water to other parts of the site on a source that's entirely independent from the fire hydrant. Um, we have also um, agreed to maintain and actually repair a connection to the river that mm -hmm. Yapan Aryan yep. had built to fill the cisterns. So in the event that those cisterns have to be drawn down, um, the fire department can actually use uh, Pioneer Gardens uh, equipment to refill them and keep that water source flowing. And then finally, um, he requested what's known as a tank wrap. It's essentially a sprinkler system that gets built around the tanks. Uh, the purpose of that is for the fire department to charge them and dose water onto the tanks to keep them cool um, because the primary concern is mm -hmm. keeping the temperature of those tanks down if some other part of the site is on fire. Right. Um, and uh, we've agreed to implement all of those. Uh, they, they seem like reasonable um, additions. They are above and beyond the code, but, but they seem like good sense um, and, and good protection. Um, and so then uh, from here, we're, we're now at the state step of the process where we're requesting a land license um, from the select board. Uh, if that were to be approved, the next step would be to submit that fire safety analysis, detailed plans all the way down to drawings with rebar layout of the foundation of the tanks to the state fire marshal's office for review of all those technical aspects. Should they approve, uh, we'd then have permission to construct the tanks. And at that point, before we fill them, the state fire marshal comes out to inspect them. And then there's an ongoing uh, inspection period after that. Um, so that's the work that we've been doing. Uh, mm -hmm. As Dick mentioned, we also have um, a couple of folks from Somerset Planning and Engineering. Uh, they're our consultants and actually the installer of the tanks that, uh, that have a great deal of experience and knowledge of these large tanks um, and some of the safety systems involved uh, in case there are questions uh, of that nature. And, and we've also got the representative of uh, the grower. Great. Um, so with well, thank that, you for um, that synopsis. We'd like to um, uh, address any questions that the board may have, and I'll probably say a whole lot less than I have now because uh, these other folks Understood. know more than I do about uh, these systems. So our, our, I guess um, I'll just start with um, my major concern is just the size and, uh, and worry about, um, you know, heaven forbid that that does explode. <laughs> that uh, I... And I would like to know what the blast radius is. Has that been looked at? I, you know, and I had heard that it was very large, um, but I, I don't, you know, I'd love to hear from engineers and, um, you know, and, and from, the, from the fire chief uh, Melnick that, you know, what, it, what are the risks to, to the properties around there if, if something does, you know, catastrophic happen there? Um, my concern was, you know, and I thank you for laying out the, um, rationale, because when I heard 60,000 gallons, you know, that's excessive in my mind, but of course it's all re relative to what you use it for. Um, and I just, I think of the, the cost <laughs> to heat that building is, um, you know, something like $4 million a year at that, at that rate. Um, now I go, I know that's peak, so right. it's not like you're, you're spending $4 million on heat a year, but, um, Correct. 
you know, at, at 237 a gallon, and hopefully he'll get a deal at that price, but uh, at that volume. But I just, um, so I was concerned, can, can we, um, I'm concerned with the size, concerned with the safety, and then, um, and I assume you've looked at this to find, find ways to kind of reduce that. Um, and, and how would you go about that if, if, it, if you had to reduce it? So, Sure. Um, and so uh, I guess I would invite I'm sure. uh, my associates from, Welcome from to come Somerset up. Planning Thank uh, you. to address some of their experiences with, with yeah. similar installations. The, that would be great. I'd love to have some experience there. This is John Wall. Hi, Hi John. How are you? Welcome. Kurt Baker from mm. Kurt. Kurt. Very nice to meet you, Kurt. Address. Yeah, any, okay. any kind of concerns? I don't know if you've heard my concerns, but where size was a, was a major concern for safety, uh, blast radius, um, how, you know, how, if it does explode, we have a catastrophic failure, um, how, how big is the radius of, of damage, um, and, um, and then, and, 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 you know, I see a bit of why the need that, that much, but um, is, is it, you know, how many how many times a week would you how many times a, a month would you fill the tanks that kind of thing? I'm just trying to understand the volume of how much. Sure. Going I, through that. I, first of all, I apologize for my voice. No problem. It's that time of the year. <laughs> a 500 mile drive up here to get here to see wow. me. I spent most of the day on the phone, so I'm about to talk. <laughs> so. Well, I'm glad you um, saved a little for us. Oh, so. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> thank uh, you. Uh, it's always always good to come from me. It's always good to come to New England. So. Yep. Thank you. Um, I'll speak to the volume uh, first, if you don't mind, and uh, Kirk is, is uh, a little more versed in, in being able to answer your first question. Okay. Um, but I, I will say quickly uh, that it, it's just kind of um, a nuance, if you will. Um, the fact that there are no other, um, there's nothing else stored as opposed to like a bulk propane, you know, bulk dispensing facility, folks that, you know, sell propane. Normally, they have cylinders and stuff sitting all around. So, if there is any issue, those become actually Large those become more of an issue right. than the tank. The tank, Kirk was big, the, the tank is built to vent. As it gets warm, it vents. Yeah, if you've ever seen a video on the rare, rare occasions that one of these the fire happens close to or near a tank, you'll hear this. Oh. Yeah, so that's literally the tank getting warm enough that it opens the relief valves, vents pressure. You hear this. But the, the, the noises that you hear around are all the little 20-pound uh, or 100-pound cylinders. Those are the ones that are, are exploding and, and really creating more of an issue. Yep. But to go to the volume issue, um, everything you know, from a design basis, and, and we're, the, we're the installer, mm -hmm. uh, but we, we do from a standpoint of, of credibility, if you will, um, we do designs for bulk propane facilities um, in, in Pennsylvania, uh, Ohio, uh, Virginia, Maryland. So we've, okay. we've done, uh, and prim our primary business in the propane world is we do the design and build. Okay. Uh, we've done both. We've done design and build specifically. So uh, we, we certainly have done the design work. And uh, looking at what is in place here is, is very much in, in, in keeping with what you would expect for a facility that has uh, I, I peak demand, and and it's uh, you know uh, all of us that live in the northern part of the United States understand uh, weather uh, mm -hmm. for you know uh, at least cold weather. Yep. So you get uh, you get a circumstance where you have zero, ten days of zero degree weather. Halfway through that, the the roads become impassable for three or four days, and and the next thing you know, you you have an investment that's. In serious jeopardy. Right. So, so the volume, the workable volume, is uh, certainly. Had we designed the facility, that's actually, I would have suggested, uh, and we did actually talk to Harvest about the consideration for a third tank. Mm -hmm. uh, conservatively, from the operational standpoint of the system, it would be far more comforting to have the additional volume. And know that during the, the coldest, uh, the worst case scenarios, which is what you always have to consider in design work, um, that would be a lot more, more comforting. Mm -hmm. um, they, they've uh, obviously they're wanting they're sensitive to capital cost and they're mm -hmm. sensitive to um, their surroundings. So that's that's my from my conversations with them. 
that was where we settled on the uh, on the two thirty thousands. So the working volume is exactly as uh, as Chris described. Mm -hmm. um, the tank, under the worst of, uh, case scenario, it certainly it certainly can be drained. It, it can be taken down uh, to nothing. But once you get to uh, to that point, the equipment, um, the the pumps uh, that are pumping liquid out of the bottom of the tank. Remember, a, a propane tank has a has a gas space. A okay. vapor space and a liquid space. Right? Okay. So the vapor space in these tanks is unable to generate enough vapor to provide the 18 point some million, 18 and a half million BTUs that are necessary in, in the coldest condition. So this site will have uh, installed uh, vaporizers, pretty simple term, and they are just that. Okay. Um, liquid will be pumped, um, can be pumped or can be gravity flow either way. Uh, off the bottom of the tank into, um, into vaporizers, uh, literally flash the liquid to vapor and, and provide a sufficient, uh, sufficient vapor flow to, to provide the gas that's needed for the, uh, um, the heaters. And that's what this, this system is, uh, this installation is pretty simple okay. um, in that regard and that's, and that's how this will, this will go. So those vaporizers will operate probably below that 25% level, but somewhere in there, you start to get gas and liquid mixed. Mm -hmm. And anytime you get two-phase flow into the vaporizers, there's a vapor bypass that goes through them and it and becomes far more complicated and the machinery doesn't work as well and you don't get the flow through the, uh, through the vaporizers that are necessary to, to sustain. And, and propane is much different than natural gas in that uh, natural gas is, is nearly pure. I mean, the gas is, I'm mm -hmm. sure we have, there's gas in this town, it, it's 99.9 .9 something percent pure methane. Propane is only 90 percent, as okay. a general rule, yeah. propane. There's 10 percent of, uh, as my mother used to say, what you call it. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. just whatever, you know. Yeah. So it's other liquid hydrocarbons. So as, as that vaporizer starts to get processed two phases, you can get bleed through of liquid when that liquid gets out into what is supposed to be a vapor stream, that also creates a problem for the heaters uh, because they're not really designed to handle liquid. A, a vapor liquid mixture. So that's where that 25, there's, there's nothing scientific or magic. That's empirical. Yep. That's industry experience. So okay. that's, that's where the number that uh, Chris spoke to, of that, that usable volume, it's around that's 40. where that comes from. And um, I don't think... There's anything from a from a production or consumption standpoint. There's nothing excessive. I I, I truly understand. I mean, I understand mm -hmm. all the, the other issues that, sure. that, 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 that you're concerned about. But from a an operational standpoint, it's by no means um, excessive to keep to, to guarantee the operation of the facility. So. How often would it? Um, how often? How often do you see trucks coming in and fill? Like, what's the? What do you think the usage cycle of these tanks are? Like, how many well, it's, times it's a week really or cold. month or? Yeah. When, you, when, it's, when it's really cold, I think they'll. I think they'll bring a transport in every four or five days. I, I, I don't think there's any question that they'll need. They will not during cold weather time. They will not go more than a week before they have to bring a transport in. Okay. In April. Guesswork, right? You know, I don't know. Yeah, sure. Guessing to a month. Yeah. You know, and in summertime, be, probably not. There will be a significant right. disparity there, but in in the in the height of the cold season, I, I can't see. And that would, and as, as I'm sure you know, that depends on temperature. Of course. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You know, does does uh, did a meteor come through and break the glass of the greenhouse? All kinds of crazy stuff. Sure. Like that, right. Sure. So, but I, I would anticipate that one load per week would not sustain the operation. I, in, I in, those cold yeah. in those cold temperatures. Right. I, would see, I would think that it's possible for two transports a week, okay. certainly one. All right. It still seems excessive to me in a residential neighborhood. Are there any alternatives, like have you looked at solar, or have you looked at um, other ways to heat just besides propane? We, we're the installing I say we're, we're right. installing contractors, so I, I can't speak to what the designer actually, what, mm -hmm. what their approaches were in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I will say that, um, that the, the mechanical engineers have cycled through a number of different methods <clears throat> of controlling the airflow, controlling the humidity, heating. Um, I think that uh, 
heating with electricity at this scale is, mm -hmm. is problematic, which is what the solar would solve. The lighting is, is a different issue. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it, it is not, uh, we actually did discuss at one point a cogeneration um, facility uh, that would produce both the heat and the electricity on site. Um, the, the capital cost of that did not even come close to making sense. Um, in that case, we'd be talking about a situation where some of that gas is producing the light. Um, but uh, in this case, uh, in terms of the heat, uh, it, it kept coming back to, you know, the, the, to make the operation efficient enough. Uh, it, it was gas, oil, I suppose, but that, that was really a non-starter. Had you looked at a, um, a joint partnership with the anaerobic digesters right next door? Uh, it was discussed. I don't know for certain whether whether it was reached out to a discussion with the Melnix or not. Um, but I I did bring that because uh, I I was familiar with the digester and brought that to great the source. Um, I, I believe that there is available a couple of million BTU, um, but not nowhere near eighteen. Not not close. There's there's, there's a few, and I became aware of this like uh, recently, but. I've worn a lot of hats in my life, and I do mm -hmm. have familiarity with anaerobic digesters as well. So okay. there's a couple of things that go with that. Okay. Um, one is um, you're now taking methane, but very impure methane. Yep. All right. So you're taking that methane and trying to mix it. Remember, I told you these these heaters are designed to digest, not digest, to use propane. Two different gases, two different BTU values. Gotcha. So mixing and matching methane into uh, a system that's designed to burn on propane right. on, a, on a somewhat infrequent or cyclical basis Very is, is nearly design impossible. And I, again, right. I'm sure the designers have looked at that. The other thing that becomes problematic with methane from uh, anaerobic digestion is its impurity and the, the acidic value, you know, the, the acids, uh. the, the other stuff that are obtained in that. The, the normally, and I have no familiarity at all, so I proclaim to, none, to yep. know nothing about this operation, but the ones I've been around typically take that methane and use it um, for electrical generation. Correct. And those generators are designed specifically, the components within those uh, generators are designed specifically to, tr to handle that impure gas, much the same as the impure gas that comes off of landfill gas yes. generation. You know, yes. so similar concepts. Yes. Of thing. So, um, okay. It's a it's a tomatoes and and uh, cucumbers kind of a thing. Okay, that's good explanation. How warm do the uh, greenhouses have to stay? Um, that is a question that I actually don't know the answer to, unfortunately. Well, I would guess about over thirty two degrees. Certainly. I well, guess. <laughs> yeah. You're an ops manager, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, at night, it should be over fifty degrees. Over, over fifty, 50 at night. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I forgot we did have. Okay. Um, <laughs> the cultivator here. Yeah, the only reason I bring it up is you're kind of in an ideal area for a geothermal heat as well, mm -hmm. which might help offload some of the gas usage. So I would just suggest that might be worth looking into uh, because God only knows we know there's plenty of water in that area. <laughs> Sometimes it's very close. Too much. <laughs> but um, it... Uh, but, you know, it's... From a, from a um, comfort standpoint, if you will, um, um, you know, familiarity uh, breeds contempt and familiarity breeds anxiety as well. We have installed um, tanks of this magnitude uh, and they're commonly used in rural areas, Pennsylvania for sure, as heating for schools. Mm -hmm. um, we've installed... Uh, tanks of similar magnitude, um, 25 feet from a junior high school that has 400 kids in it. Um, uh, and I don't say that to in any way to, uh, in any form of placation, mm -hmm. uh, simply as, as a um, comment that these applications are certainly common you know, across the, the width and the breadth of, of, uh, of the United States as propane has become more and more of a uh, substitute and more and more used for, for places where there just is you know, insufficient natural gas. Right, right. You know, the, uh, you know, granted one of my concerns is, you know, well, with any engineering. Uh, a few years ago, we dealt with Berkshire Hathaway for natural gas. And they never have a problem 
well, until you start reading. Then they have all kinds of problems. So, you know, it's, uh, so I, you know, always has reservations. You know, um, I would count on Devin's input on a lot of this to make sure that the neighborhood would be safe. Uh, because my understanding of propane is it's a heavy gas, so it goes across the ground. And it's not like natural will go up. So um, it's, that's of a concern. You know, his aspect of a, uh, the blast radius, um, I don't see any, anything in the design for any type of uh, blast gates, so to speak, around this area. So the last thing I'll, and I, know, mm -hmm. I know Kirk could speak to this, and I'm kind of jumping over him here just a minute, but the other, the other thing, um, the other two things that are very germane are, one is the, the NFP 58 guidance document, the code document. Uh, we were actually just discussing before the meeting. It's, it's probably one of the most universally accepted documents across various, across the states as far as we've ever uh, worked, and that's from Florida to Maine, okay. okay, up the East Coast, nothing, nothing west of the Mississippi, um, because it is a document that is put together specifically for one item, for the use of propane. And when we were discussing the, the comparison of that to NFPA 30, which deals with gasoline, kerosene, naphtha, you know, and, and so if you look at uh, local authorities or even state authorities, they pick and choose pieces out of that to, to cobble together, if you will, their, their own code. NFPA 58 is one of the most universally, and I, and I assure you, I've been in the permitting and regulatory business for sadly close to 40 years now. <laughs> Uh, good, good, but bad, right? Yeah. Um, it's one of the most universally accepted codes that there is. So there's comfort in that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, um, the state of Massachusetts has a um, a very rigorous permit application. Obviously, um, if there's concurrence at the local level, the package that goes to the state, where they will consider all of the things, uh, where they're obliged to consider all of the things that are on your minds. Mm -hmm. um, is a very rigorous process as well. So there, there is that, uh, that comfort as well, if you will. Mm -hmm. I know comfort's the right word or not, but you understand what I mean, I'm sure. I do. Thank you. Um, Darren, do you, do you wanna come up and just, uh, yeah, I know that you've had uh, some discussions about this. Do you have any concerns? Do you, um, do you wanna speak to this at all? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Like <laughs> You're not in trouble here. Um, so <laughs> he spent a lot of time there, so he knows. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, meeting with Chris and walking the site and working with um, the builders of the propane tanks. Um, the tanks are designed and laid out in the plans to go north south. Okay. Versus east west. Okay. Because if you look at where the tanks are sitting, if anything were to happen, the greenhouse is there and then it goes out towards Child's Fields. Cross Road out right. to open land. Right, right. To the south, it has Barway Farm. Yep. But then, you know, it's one field. building, one building, and then open field. Right. Um, it, I couldn't get the, the calculations for worrisome if you want to try to match oranges to oranges here, like uh, Kurt was saying, you know, a methane gas is a dirty gas. Yeah. But if you were to take the cubic feet and what's there now at the digester yep. and try to compress it into a tank form, yep. into gallon inch, you're not going to be too far off with what's going into this facility. I see. For so size. you've already got a large a large volume of a flammable mm -hmm. gas there right um in the paperwork chris and i have discussed about how we're going to do fire suppression yep uh, as far as a blast radius i would say it's going to be up to at least a mile mm. if anything were to happen um but looking at other facilities in the community or not in the community but 
in the county, mm -hmm. Sunderland, they've got Ostermans, they've yep. got one tank, but it's by a huge com uh, apartment complex. Right, right. Buildings, residential, you know, commercial. Yeah. Uh, Greenfield, Berkshire Gases substation yep. up in Greenfield, they have two uh, 35,000 gallon tanks. Right below residential, uh, Wakeley, and that's not, it's within a quarter mile mm. of the elementary school. So if you try to kind of put that in perspective with what we have going on, you know, um, between the digester, also over at the rail yard, mm -hmm. there's 60,000 gallons of diesel fuel over there. There's 15,000 gallons of gasoline, uh, 2,500 gallons of motor oil. Yeah. That's all over there at the rail yard. Right. And that's kind of, I know you're talking liquid versus gas, mm -hmm. gallonage explosion. numbers. Right, similar. Similar, mm -hmm. similar layouts of, of the neighborhood. So if that kind of puts it in perspective for mm -hmm. you. you it know. definitely helps. Um, but as far as fire suppression, I have called um, Jake at the fire marshal's office. I've spoke with John Woods. Um, everything is compliant with NFPA 58. Yep. Uh, everything has been up to snuff with uh, CMR 5.7, mm -hmm. which is our fire code. Okay. And Kurt is right. They do pull the pieces. Um, out of NFPA 58 for that. Okay. Um, if you had smaller tanks, though, and you say you had um, three $10,000, 10,000-gallon tanks, then you wouldn't have to have as much space wasted because it seems like in those two tanks, you're wasting 25% just, just so that you can pump it in there. So if you're really using, you know, if you're looking 34, at 34,000, how about three 10,000 gallon tanks instead of two 30,000 gallon tanks? If, if you do that, you're still forced to remove 25% from the 10,000 gallon tanks right. and the 15% on top of those. It, it nets out to be the same amount of, uh, of wastage, if you will, if you're using smaller tanks. The other issue that you get into with multiple tanks is more surface area, which is the concern if you ever are involved in any kind of an incident. You want to minimize the surface area. That's what area I was just going to say. What's the, what's the industry experience with 30,000-gallon um, tanks versus the 10,000 or 20,000-gallon tanks? In, if, for bulk storage, uh, the 30,000-gallon tank is probably the most predominantly used tank in, in the uh, country. The reason for that goes back to NFPA 58. Uh, NFPA 58 has certain regulations involving anything above 4,000 gallons and anything below 30,000 gallons. So there's that, there's, there's that sweet spot, if you will, in, in the construction of the tanks. And if the demand is such, you know, they will, the, they typically at that point you stop from a 30, you, you put in two 30s rather than one 60, for example. I see. Because it's, it, it's, it's more manageable and easier to deal with. That is what people use. If you took the summation of all the other from 6,500s up to 60,000s, might end up making this up. So mm -hmm. like yep. But uh, I, I would wager that the, the number of all other tanks is not equal to the number of 30,000s that are used in the United States. Right. And so, this, so what you're saying is the safety record on a 30,000 gallon tank is better because it, it has less surface area mm -hmm. for incidents. And, and I, don't, I, don't know know. Could, I don't know that I, I, I certainly didn't say that. I won't be able to, I certainly mm -hmm. don't want to mislead in any fashion. The, the 30,000 gallon tank is an industry standard because it fits into the regulations very nicely. It maximizes the amount of volume that you can store while not having to go to, to the next level of, of setbacks and, and all the things that go like 45,000. Originally, the original, um, when we were pricing this out for the installation, the original uh, look was for 345000 
And, and then you thought they, had, we were, they were getting too close down the road and there were all kinds of other issues. So this started out at 345s, went to 330s, and down to 230s as, as to, to get down to the minimal amount of storage that could run the facility and, and take up the, the smallest footprint on the site and be the most manageable volume. Hmm. Are there any other um, safety, um, In, anything else you could add from a safety point of view that um, I, I, make I, us I would comment that uh, when you're <clears throat> on, a, on a, a propane installation of this type, the, uh, the approach to it is always toward, uh, it's, it's about product containment is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. um, the, the whole idea is, and what they found over the, over the history of accidents over the last hundred years, is that the trouble happens when the gas gets loose. And so what you do is you just do, you make sure that it doesn't get loose. Some of the changes that have occurred over the last, in, even in the last 10 years, 2011, <clears throat> the final, one of the, uh, one of the final rules were put into place has to do with the installation of what are called internal valves in these tanks. An internal valve is a valve that's mounted in the tank and so that if the outside piece is broken off, the valve closes inside the tank and doesn't allow product out. That's now required on all propane tanks. So issues like, or protective measures of this type have been taken over the years and they've evolved and it's all aimed at just maintaining or keeping the product in place. So if it's in the tank, it can't cause a problem. If you break off a pipe downstream, there are things like excess flow valves that are put in place to prevent too much gas from escaping to get to where it can be a problem. Right. And as you say, it is, it is a heavier than, than air gas. So we don't want, we, we try to uh, configure things in such a way where it doesn't accumulate and it can disperse and drop what's called the lower flammability limit. So that it's, it's all aimed at, at that basically idea of keeping the gas where it belongs and not letting it go to where it's not supposed to be. Um, from an inundation point of view, what happens if there's water that um, is in the area, say, halfway Susceptible up the to tanks? flooding there, for sure. Susceptible to flooding. I mean, we, we remember in Irene, a lot of the propane tanks sailing down the Deerfield River and hissing away. So, um, yeah, so we, how were they we anchored? At, but, uh, in fact, yeah. at times we were considering whether an underground tank would be feasible. So we absolutely looked at the buoyancy. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the fact is that uh, these are going to be uh, actually bolted to concrete piers for okay. foundation. So yep. regardless of the need for buoyancy, yep. um, those still... foundations are about 7 foot by 12 foot under the ground and 12 inches thick. Um, right. So there's, there's quite a lot of weight okay. holding them down. And on top of that, Chris, what are the, the mounts that the tanks are going on? They're about 4 feet high? Correct. Yeah. So okay, so have, up in the air a bit. You're going to have four, the tank's going to be four feet off the ground to start. Okay, good. And there are, and the design also takes into account uh, when you, NPA 58, when this design is done, uh, seismic is also looked at. So okay. that's also taken into consideration. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the, the foundation drawings, which I, I don't have them with me, but they've been designed by a structural engineer. Um, that's one of the requirements to, yep. to send them to the state fire marshal's office. Mm -hmm. And also, too, um, because it's a dual gas facility, meaning natural gas and propane, um, Berkshire Gas has a program, so there'll be another set of eyes throughout the whole thing um, because, the, it, because of the natural gas and the uh, mm -hmm. propane there. And also, too, when, you know, if this does go through, uh, any propane truck that operates from coast to coast has to take a designated route at all times. So you're not going to have a truck come down Stillwater Hill, mm -hmm. you know, come down Stillwater, up to Mill Village, take a left, then take a right in the facility. It'll come off 91, more than likely, it'll come off 91, come down Child's Cross Road, take a left and a left to the facility. And every time a truck comes through, that's the, that's route. the way that it'll come. And it's the same for Ostermans, it's the same for Berkshire Gas and Wheatley, and it's the same for uh, Greenfield. So it's not, you're gonna, not going to have a bunch of cowboys coming in with 10,000 gallon propane tanks freewheeling through the town. Okay. okay. Um, question for you, Chief, is are the underwriters going to require you to have any different equipment than what you currently have? Not that I'm aware of right now. 
there isn't anything. Okay. Um, with obviously too, as this develops, as it goes through the fire marshal's office, and any because you know you got training? you got oh, yeah. you got sixty thousand there, and there's potential of twenty four thousand just around the corner. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and, and there's a lot of propane the, in that area. We're not fracking. <laughs> and the anaerobic di digester is right there, too. There's a lot of fuel there. So. Oh, yeah. So if something goes wrong, it's, it's, um, it's a large. What kind of safety um, does Berkshire Gas have with, with their installation as far as since Every it's year, a dual supply? What, the, what was that Since called? it's a dual supply, you know, the natural gas is coming in. Are, are we sure that that is, in fact, safe? And that wouldn't spark something. Well, yes, that's because already. that's on the north side of the building. That's on the completely other side. So you have the side. building between mm -hmm. the two. Right. Okay. Right. I can point that out if it's helpful. Sure. And also pro, uh, plus that in the site uh, walk around with Chris, um, we had discussed making sure that the back road where the cisterns are going, that the road also extends to the gas shut off. Okay. Where the building, you know, up to the back side of the building. Okay. So again, the tanks are located in this portion of the site. The gas main comes off the Chattel's Cross Road and enters at this corner of the uh, Okay. Uh, so this is five, six hundred feet of building between those two locations. So are they going to have any trouble maneuvering the tanker trucks getting in and out of there? doesn't look like you have any type of circular driveway. It's just either backing in or backing out. Um, so there is the ability to, and we've run the, the turning analysis on this, there's the ability to maneuver in this space for scale. Um, this dimension is a little over 100 feet. Um, they will have to back into the fill road here. I looked at numerous uh, ways of creating circulation here, but with the larger tanker truck, uh, you have the, with a smaller delivery potentially, um, and you know, more trucks, but uh, there's a need to back into this. We, we haven't um, signed on with a supplier yet, but we are uh, currently working out um, an agreement with George Propane, um, and they've been, uh, they've taken a look at this uh, site, and once they're officially on board, we're gonna um, take a very close look at the site to see if there are any potential choke points um, to getting in and out. Uh, but that was definitely a, a strong consideration in the layout that we have. And also to answer your question, Carolyn, as far as any type of a training from, you know, mm. once this goes on forward, um, I see doing something with a uh, multi-department training at least mm -hmm. once a year. Yeah. You know, just to kind of like what Berkshire Gas does down in Waitley for their facility, mm -hmm. I would probably duplicate it, you know, up here for us. Right. Do you have, I mean, does Deerfield Academy have propane tanks, Darren? They do, but not to this magnitude. So not, you've had so size. you so you have had some experience with this. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I mean, you know, just for example, uh, Pioneer Gardens, um, they're putting in. Uh, I think they were six or sixteen. Yeah, the Eight. sixteen thousand gallons, but four tanks. Right. And it's four. underground. It is underground. Yeah. It is underground. So yeah. yep, we just looked at that. You know. And I know with Berkshire Gas, like with Deerfield Academy, because it's a dual fuel facility, you know, everything's marked. So that mm -hmm. way, if you go shut off a gas main, there's a tag that's there that says there's a propane. Mm -hmm. It's also propane. Yeah. You know, so you're not forgetting one. And, and with working with Berkshire Gas for this, and plus that, you know, between George and Berkshire Gas, and they have the knowledge of the facility in Waitley mm -hmm. and in Greenfield, uh, working with them, you know, we'll just give another set of eyes and, and, and help us all out down the road. Good. What's your protocol now for um, dealing with the, the dual fuels and, you know, your inspections and what, what do you do as a department? Uh, if it's just a, a general spill, a tank on fire, odors, I mean, Depends. It, it all varies on what comes in for What's the call. What's the issue is, yeah. If, if it's a gas smell, uh, what we do is we roll an engine, uh, we have a meter on the truck, we get there, make sure everybody's evacuated, power shut off, or gas is shut off, 
then we start smelling with the meter of what the levels are in the house. Then we start to ventilate until levels are zero. And, uh, and then we notify the gas company to have a tech come out to uh, check out what's going on. So it would be pretty much a same thing. Another thing like that. So before I open it up to the public, any other comments from the board or? No, no, no. Any public comments? Chris, I saw you had a hand so, up. Yeah, so is this going to be the largest tanks, propane tanks in the town of Deerfield and the largest single inventory site? I would say so. I mean, as far as I know, I'm, I'm aware. I mean, you probably know better than me, but. Yeah, that would be the, in my district, that would be the biggest. Yeah. I'm not. We, we've I'm had larger sure. tanks in town before, but they're no longer there. Uh, across from the butterfly shop, there used to be one that was larger than that. Was um, that just a, a Do you remember how that station? How that was, that was station? a mm -hmm. uh, Pyr Pyrex gas company. Bruce, mm -hmm. you remember? Mm -hmm. But that that was a very large tank, um, and of course, you know, we did have the one blow up in the center of town that just about leveled the whole center of town. But that was back in the early 1900s. Most people don't remember that one. When was that? In the early 1900s, it was a large, uh, right over here, right across from Wikipedia where uh, BBC is now. Uh, there was a large explosion there. It took out a lot of the center of town. Yeah, but that was killed. What one, two, two people? Hmm. We have a historian here, Mrs. Bechtel. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I ask is, is, um, is there learning and best practices that have come from these other installations that may be somewhere in some town, maybe not just in that fire district? And how would we sync those up? Right. I, I can't think of another facility that large in town, but obviously with Waitley is probably the closest, you know, the for Berkshire Gas's storage facility there. I don't think they completely filled that out, did they? They did a, they were going to do several I tanks. Think they have, they, I think they have the ability to build one more tank. One more tank, right. Um, last I heard. And the other question is, um, from an operating standpoint, an operating protocol standpoint, depending on the season and the contingency that's required, will they be keeping inventories lower? certain points, and even taking, quote, partial deliveries versus maximum deliveries in order to keep the inventory lower. Well, is I know better, if it was my it business, I would. for the I tank would. to be <laughs> full, or, you know, can you, can you empty it out during the off-season? I mean, is there any advantage? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. Probably the best answer here. <laughs> They try to work their inventory down. And it's driven on commodity costs. Right. You try to work your inventory down so you get towards the end of the summer, prices go down. That's and when you buy. You lock in some sort of an event. I'm sure the gentleman behind it who sells propane can speak to this more knowledgeably than I can. Uh, but in general, you work your inventory down, wait for the price to go down, you lock in a, you lock in a block of propane, and somewhere when you get close to the heating season, you fill your tax back up. So, it's, it's not driven by safety, uh, as it may appear to be. Uh, the tanks are right. safe, the tanks are intrinsically safe by how they're designed and the, and the redundancies that are built in the Kirkdon, the internal valves and relief valves, and there's so yeah. many shutdowns and blah, blah, blah. So it it's, has far more to do commodity. with, yeah, it has far more to do with the price of the commodity and managing cost. Mm -hmm. But the answer to your question, going in the back door, is yes, not, but not for the reason you might think. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. No, I just didn't know yep. offhand whether it. I mean, I didn't know one way or the other if it was safer to keep them half empty and then full all the time. Or it's you like know, when you're we're... filling your two oil tanks. You don't do it in the middle of the winter if you don't have to. <laughs> but it sounds like they'll be doing it about every week in the middle of the winter. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a lot of. I think your fire chief made a great point as well. That, that, um, I think these loads. Of course not. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. This is all cowboy industry. Yeah. Right. And, and another thing I want to make sure to point out too is that the most of the time, correct me if I'm wrong, most of the time is the, the driver has to unload the load and he's there the whole time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. From, from turning the first valve to connect the hose to the last turn of the valve to disconnect the hose. He is there the complete time. So, yeah. So, well, we're in the regulated industry, and the industry has responded well to the to the regulations. Oh, okay. uh, Mr. Chairman, I I uh, just want to say that we have been discussing this quite assiduously over the last several days and trying to figure out some alternatives because mm -hmm. we understand your concern with public safety. Yeah. And. We haven't come up with any strong concessions that I've been able to engineer, frankly. Right. But I want to point out a couple of things. I've been reading the statute that, that governs why we're here tonight. It's section 13 of chapter 148. And there's a couple of interesting things in here. One is that the statute, curiously, contains no standards by which you are to make your decision. And I don't know why, hmm. but there's just no standards in here at all. Um, it also provides that it authorizes you to impose any conditions that you feel reasonable. Mm -hmm. And the chief and Chris have worked out five or six Several. conditions when right. I mm -hmm. urge you to adopt those formally mm -hmm. as part of your decision. And there's also a curious provision in the statute. It's the very last paragraph. It says basically if anyone is aggrieved by your granting of this application, that he or she may bring an appeal directly to the state fire marshal. Mm -hmm. The state, marshal, state fire marshal um, is, is uh, mandated then to make a determination and, uh, uh, and respond directly to, to the, the appellate there. So there's some provisions yes, built into the statute, I think, that would, would enhance public safety yep. as well <coughs> as the, the engineering of the, of the uh, tanks and all of that. Um, um, and as to the, the question of, of the, the items that Darren and I have gone over, um, I'm not sure if this was submitted beforehand, but I do have copies of... I was um, just going to ask for those, if we could see that. Absolutely. Um, so what this is, is uh, that I wrote a letter essentially summarizing the conversation that we had on the site, um, mm -hmm. as well as our responses to each of the chief's points, and then um, he provided a letter on top, uh, just... Uh, uh, concurring that that's an accurate summary of our conversation um, and that the comments were satisfied at least as of the time of, of writing. Thank you. I, I realize now that that should have gone to you um, in advance. That's fine. Any other questions before I close the hearing? Um, the only thing I say one more uh, just to the chief is that you know I would get a hold of underwriters just talk to them yep see you might have to upgrade some equipment and now's the time to be asking for it mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. later right yep. if you need it mm -hmm. so it's just you know. um, Darren just looking at the first um, paragraph here it's a tier one has Matt response yeah, um, has the R, has the REPC has anyone from the REPC looked at this at all? I mean, it was just a, an alarm card that would be in existence for this, and okay. seeing with the and you don't want to change it. You don't want to change it at all. No, I think it'll be something that'll be as as this project goes on. It'll be a work in progress until it's done and we do activate a drill. Mm -hmm. um, I know, um, you know, for example, we're doing a drill on the 20th up at All States. Yeah. And that was one of those things where I formed an alarm card up to a second or third alarm. We're going to do the drill. We're going to chip the iceberg and get it going and we'll have a critique afterwards. And I think that's what this is going to be. Um, like. At the last R, yeah, at the last REPC meeting, we had talked about um, doing a, you know, a real drill. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe 
as a result of, of this drill that you're doing at um, all states. Maybe we should be, um, you know, making sure that we're doing some kind of follow-up drill on this. Mm -hmm. You just had a live drill at all state, didn't you? <laughs> 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 yep. Actually, yeah. I wanted to ask you that because, you know, I was saying goodbye to Skip on the porch and that fire was right there. I saw it. And um, no yeah, one had you, called you it in. You had a good view. I know. No one called it in. I don't know why. Oh, well, they, they, there was, uh, I mean, it, it by the just, time I got on scene, there was six reports. Okay. Because I, I was really shocked that there hadn't, no one had called it in. I wasn't sure if it was Woman Hill or where it was. It came exactly. in as Lamore Lumber. Oh. Oh, is that where? You live on that the wrong side of the river. <laughs> it, I'm on my porch. That's my view is across the valley. And I was shocked. I got the binoculars and it looked like a giant. Well, I, I thought size, that the woods were on fire. Yeah, good size fire. Yeah. yeah, couldn't believe it. So yeah, as far as far as uh, uh, this facility will have a designated alarm card, and we will do, like I said, we will do a yearly drill. Well, we were, like I said, at the REPC meeting just you know last at the beginning of um, or October first, I guess it was. Um, we were talking about doing a drill. I think this would be um, a good idea mm -hmm. um, for a drill. Just a thought, because mm -hmm. we just don't have, you know, we're not really doing a lot of tier one responses. Yeah, and that, and I mean, as, as far as a tier one response, I think that is uh, five to eight. What did I? Uh, I think it was five to eight hazmat level one people, and then they get a command going, and then they start calling in extra resources as needed. Okay. All right. Let me just finish reading this. If there's anything else. Oh, I think you know my my thoughts were we we would close this um, and take our next meeting to vote on it. That way we can incorporate in the things, the safety measures that they're doing into our um, decision. Yeah, that would um, give me a chance to look at this. Yeah. A little bit more. Okay. So. What's the time frame you're looking at to try to get these tanks installed? I'm sorry, I, I, my, my hearing is bad. I apologize. Well, I was actually looking right behind you, but <laughs> the time frame for getting the tanks installed. As, uh, as soon as, or if, if with your approval, mm -hmm. um, the other so the, applied to this tank. Right, so um, after, uh, if, if the land license is approved, um, then the town needs to issue a, a registration. I'm, I'm fuzzy on, on that step, uh, a registration document. Uh, which is the last piece that we need to submit to the state fire marshal. Um, we have all the other components of that application ready to mail today, yep. um, and they have 30 days to review that application um, and then render a decision. Um, and the um, and then uh, it is theoretically possible to to get the concrete in the ground before the ground freezes. Um, right. From a construction standpoint, that's that's my main concern. Right. We have, we have uh, tanks ready, you know, we have, we can get the base project put together reasonably uh, efficiently, but moving concrete in the ground based on the fact that we're on October 10th is, is really a big issue for us. Mm -hmm. so we meet again on the 23rd. Mm. I, I understand where you're coming from. Is there any public comment at this point? Well, I'll to make a motion to close the hearing, or take a motion to close the hearing. I make a motion to close the hearing. I'll second it. Any further discussion on that motion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, geez, I feel uh, bad about holding off on a decision from a construction point of view. Um, well, I think we need a little bit of time. I mean, unless you want to have a meeting next week, but... Um, you know what, we, uh, we're going to go to the spaghetti dinner. Or were you going to go to the spaghetti mm -hmm. dinner? So we could have a... We could have a five-minute meeting. I just, I'd like the week to kind of talk with Diana and figure out where we need to go with, you know, making sure we incorporate all the safety measures into our decision. Yep. I just don't want to 
vote it immediately. So right. if we could take the week to do that and not rush it and make a mistake, I'd, I'd be happy to come and meet on the 16th if you want. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. Dave, are you working that night? Could we? Um, we could do it early. Uh, yeah, let's do it early. Do, what time do, do it you at 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do it at 5 o'clock. Okay. Let me just see what time. The meeting's at 5, so maybe 4.30. 4.30 is fine. 4.30 okay. is fine with me. All right. You can meet at my house if you want. <laughs> Meet the Polish club, that's where the spaghetti is going to be. So, oh. okay, no, oh, I think I got my house Thank as a you. bar. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yep, so we'll do that. We'll come that's in. A question. That's uh, to do of course, that. sure. What's, what's the, what is the population of Deerfield? Uh, 5,003 yeah. something. It's 51. 51. Yeah. Beautiful town. It's gorgeous, gorgeous yeah. here. Yeah. Really nice place. Right for small town yes, we're very fortunate to live here. Um, Great resonance. And so I, I assume that's a public meeting that, that you're Yes, it would be. Yes, yes, of course. So if it I would can, be here. Uh, of course. So, yes, yeah. yeah. We'll make sure to. I was just making a decision in. about meeting at <laughs> yeah, no. no, exactly. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, as long as it's open to the public, I guess that's <laughs> it fine. It sure is. No, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to drag it out another week, but I'm, I just want, I'm yeah, really sure uncomfortable just signing off on this. This that's is not a standard thing. Yeah, let's just take the week and work on it. And I... I appreciate Darren, you coming and yeah, thank um, you for the information. information. Thank you for all of your information. Um, you're coming up and it helps. I just want to make sure that we've really, you know, covered everything. Absolutely. So um, we had a very similar conversation at the planning board about wanting to make sure all of the conditions are exactly as as the board. Right. Uh, had they voted say. last night? I didn't catch the meeting. But um, I didn't they, know they, two nights ago, but two yes, nights. they they approved the, uh, the okay. changes to the plan. Okay. Good. And we did uh, conservation commission last week, and the changes were also approved there. Okay, good. All right, sounds good. Well, thank you all very much. Have You're a great welcome. night. Thank you. So that. As an installer, I can tell you, we're extremely aware of what we're dealing with. Yeah, I can imagine. I don't want to. And I appreciate where you're at. Yeah. I, I, and I also I want to thank you for being very professional. You yeah. were able to answer our questions. And I, yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. And we're not Good. and we're not trying to give you a hard time. It's just Good. Thank you. Perfect. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good. 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 Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you for coming. Bruce. Of course we could. We could take you right now if you'd like, right? Mm -hmm. well, we Absolutely. Or do we have Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, oh, 645. We can be stop. fairly quick. Yeah. And then, great. You know, well, they. Sure. Yeah. Julian and Bruce, thank you very much for coming in. I'm sorry yeah, to make you wait. Sure. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Bruce. So this, um, we're changing the schedule a little bit here and welcoming our, our building assessment committee here. Um, they have the results of the um, request for qualifications for the designer selection committee evaluation summary, and. Um, I'll give you the floor, Julie. Thank you. Maybe you want to wait a sec till things die down, maybe? So we can hear. We're good? Go um, All right. So you have in front of you a copy of the results from the review of the proposals. We had three proposals. Um, we went through them all and checked references, and we had a unanimous recommendation for um, GRLA. Um, there and that recommendation is pending successful fee negotiations. Okay. Um, Fantastic. And our, I, I, this is really speaks for itself. Is this the firm that did the last? It's not. No. It's not. There's a new firm. No. Okay, great. Yes. EDM actually came in third. It came, what? They were third. Oh, they came in third. Okay. They did. Yep. And then Austin was the other. Was Austin. the other. Yep. Very close. Very the close second. Yep. Yeah, very close. GRLA has, the, they had a plethora of examples of doing exactly what we want done Great. in other Massachusetts towns. Okay. Um, and Felt really good with them. And yeah. It, well, it was a usable document according to the reference. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, one town did, not, uh, they did 19 buildings in one town. Wow. And, uh, each document is a usable document for the town. 
Great. Separate document. So. Great. So do you want us to vote to have you go ahead and negotiate, or do you, are you going to negotiate with I don't them? know if we can negotiate. All right. I think what we're going to do is we're going to have you award um, contingent on negotiation, and we'll do a letter of award and then ask them to give us the price basically back, and then we'll then this board will okay. negotiate. And you can invite us to be part of the yeah. negotiation. Yeah, I, I was just going to say I feel really uncomfortable making that no, any decision without a, you. Because you guys are so vested. Yeah. 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 Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, then I w would like to... Um, Thank the building committee tremendously mm. so, and um, I'd like to award this to uh, Gorman, Richardson, Lewis Architects, based on successful negotiations. I'd Would second that. Any, any further discussion or any questions from the audience? Or Good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Again, you, thank you so much thank for you, your work, um, and thanks for staying. Yeah. 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 This is the original here. Um, one so, quick plug, the yeah. survey results. Um, yes. The survey, we extended the deadline till tomorrow. Oh, great. We have 580 some odd responses You know what, that's already, amazing so that's return great. for Which surveys. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're hopeful we'll get a few more and then um, we will be Tabulate. back in touch when that's we have some sort so of That's so fabulous because normally results. you get 5 or 10 percent and you think we're you're doing all right. 28 percent. Wonderful. Wow. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So public this out there, enough, if you're, yeah, if you're looking, you still have them on your counter, please. Last chance. They've extended uh, last chance to yeah. say your piece and bring bring it into the town hall. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Okay. Copies here, too. Copies There's here, too. Copies do it online here too. in the library and in the senior center. Okay. And it can be done online also, and the link online is on the town web page. That's great. So please fill it out. Um, let's boost it up a little higher even. That'd yeah. be great. I'm yeah. so glad that you've had great success with that. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank, you. thank you for all thank the good you. work. Okay. Original, Julie, I'll thank give that you. to you. Really. And Bruce, thank you very much. Yes, very you complete job. That's pretty exciting. Maybe okay. we'll get some good information. So thank you for the, uh, the help um, and, and for the patience. Um, but we will uh, we'll move along to our, our um, next scheduled um, hearing, and uh, not hearing, but appearance. Um, we will be um, introduce our local operations manager, um, informal discussions for uh, Suns Mass, uh, short-term, long-term outlook for the facility at 198 Mill Village Road. Um, proposed zoning bylaw changes received um, from the property owner. Vote to refer to planning board. Rest reports, health, public hearing, and proposed zoning changes. So, good to meet you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. I'm, I'm Richard Evans. Full of stuff. So, welcome. As you know, I'm Richard Evans. Uh, yes, thank you, Richard. And I'd like to introduce uh, formally Mar Martin Coronado. Hi, Martin. Hi, it's, how's it going? It's spelled like Martin, but it's pronounced Martin. Martin. Perfect. And uh, he is uh, here from Arizona. Yes, he is sir. Here permanently. He will be the cultivation manager. At the at the uh, Suns Mass Inc. facility on Mill Road. You want to say just a word about your yeah. yeah. Fortunately, the weather is about the same here, here as it is in Arizona. It's actually pretty nice out here. Actually, <laughs> it's been pretty wet. So a little bit wet. Just no, no scorpions. <laughs> no scorpions, thank God. But it's nice being here. I love it out here. And, uh, Good. Nice, nice being here. Good. So tell me what um, what have you done? Have you run these facilities in Arizona? And, yes, and, sir. Okay. So they're. I've been with the company for about four years. This okay. is my third facility. Oh wow. Yeah. So uh, are they all new? I'm just curiosity. Are they all uh, like Some new are new, some are indoor, some are greenhouses, some are outdoor facilities. So it just depends on the facility yeah. and the area. Interesting. Good, good. Well, welcome. Welcome Thank to you. Deerfield. So I'd like to bring you up to date on a few things. Okay. Uh, as you know, the, all the parcels were consolidated into one. It's now like an 18-acre yes. parcel. Yep, so that. Um, the app, the uh, company's application to the CCC was put in about a year ago. And uh, there have been a couple of changes, and so we are, or I should say, they are hopeful that there will be a provisional license maybe in three or four months, but then they've got to do more build out. So we're looking at operations commencing realistically probably about a year. The CCC Long is program. really yeah. bogged down these days. I can imagine. And they're, uh, it's just taking forever. So we're looking at roughly a year. Um, when, when we are open, we're anticipating uh, 35 to 50 full-time employees. Wonderful. And uh, the first year, I don't, I'm hesitant about throwing numbers out, but mm -hmm. uh, I asked somebody at the company to, if they had any projections. 
and uh, they're looking at maybe ten million dollars in sales in the first year, and then uh, mm -hmm. in future years will be multiples of that. So the prospects are very bright. Good. I don't want to yep. <laughs> create any expectations. Right. Uh, and of course, there will be local priority <coughs> for local uh, priority for vendors and and uh, Thank you. local contractors. Uh, that's principally why I'm here. I, I'd like to use this occasion to request that you uh, forward our request for the zoning change to the uh, planning board for their action, uh, and uh, we'll be prepared to uh, participate in the public hearing there. Uh, the other thing is uh, I've, I've uh, spoken with Carolyn about the prospect of the Board of Health holding a public hearing on the um, Board of Health holding a public hearing on the public health aspects of the zoning change. Well, I think it would be very valuable. We've talked about, we've penciled in the date of October 22nd, but that's only penciled in right now. And, and but we would appreciate uh, nailing down a date for that um, so we can plan for it. If you're, if you're a, of the mind to, to, to hold it. I, I mm. think um, we can do that or do that before the 23rd. I didn't know if you wanted to have a separate meeting. I The way I envisioned it was to, because um, in our zoning, it's like manufacturing. Well, it's not really manufacturing, it's processing. Mm -hmm. So I felt like Dick needed to explain or have everyone explain from the company what they're actually doing because it's really just handling the agricultural product, mm -hmm. not any different than if you're washing, triple washing spinach or, right. you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's how you're, you're handling the agricultural end of it, not it's not, not, producing not items, yeah. manufacturing in the manufacturing sense. Again, mm -hmm. it's you're taking a residential neighborhood, and what are you doing different? And, and it's, as far as I can it's see, there's not farming. a lot. Right, no, it's agricultural things. And the distilling of the oil is no different than distilling of, you know, what's going on, um, you know, when you distill lavender oil, lavender mm -hmm. plants. So... You know, I thought it would be better to have mm -hmm. confirmation of what they're actually doing in the building. Yeah, I would, I would like and, that. And then our, we've been trying, Dick and I have been trying over the last three or four years, trying to get from the CCC what is our actual responsibility as Board of Health from an inspection point of view. And, you know, uh, one of the problems with these greenhouse operations is the humidity they were talking about using you know, they have to have some of the heat or the whatever to bring down the humidity because you have potential to grow mold and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So mm -hmm. we want to know how much the state is doing for inspections and then also what we as Board of Health have to do for inspections and what our required training is because, you know, we've had no training other than you go to these seminars and they mm -hmm. tell you what you shouldn't be happening but not really what is a regular regulatory job. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, I've been really discouraged that there's not a lot of support from the state on this. So maybe the thing for us to do is to find out exactly what operations are happening there and then discuss them. And that way the planning board is 100% informed when they're making their decision for the site plan. And that's why we were talking about this, scheduling this sometime in the next couple of weeks so that all this information is out and any questions can be answered, you know, any research done as to what exactly is happening in the proposed building and what our questions would be as Board of Health, what we have to do or maybe not have to do anything. Because I'm, I'm, again, envisioning it, everything that we've done as research, it's agri you're hang, handling it as an agricultural product, really. So, I know they'll call it agricultural, and, and, that I, and then the un, uh, only thing that I've been concerned about right along that is not anything to do with whether that they have the building there or not is, is the exposure, long-term exposure of workers to um, marijuana plants. And that, you know, I've asked that on the state level over and over and Very over minimal. again. You know, what are your, you know, what safeguards are you doing for employees? You know, OSHA requirement kind of things. Mm -hmm. Because there's no OSHA, because it's not federally, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not a federal industry, so uh, approved industry. So there's no federal regulations and there's no, 
you know, rules that are established. So are we, are we going to ultimately be responsible for those employees as well, you know, oversight? So, mm -hmm. but that has nothing to do with what they're doing in that building or not doing in that building. So, um, well, the Massachusetts would supersede it anyways for safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, but they don't have any, I've, I've asked at all these different meetings yeah. that we've gone to and they don't have, I mean, nobody has any answer to me. That, well, it's I mean, just because he like started it this week, so nobody's thought about it yet. <laughs> I know. Anyway. Well, there must be other <laughs> facilities across the uh, state that are dealing with this and what, what their board of yeah, health are doing. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like no one, no, I mean, no one seems to be all that concerned. I think you're on the cutting edge. Uh, I, I'm not aware of what in other municipalities Well, I think of Dalton. I, I toured the Dalton facility. Uh, now, they didn't allow me into the growing area. But I toured the store and where they store everything and the workers and all that stuff. But, um, but I, I wonder what you know, Town of Dalton is doing for board health or anything like that. Okay, minimal. Oh, we'll take a little minimal. more research. I, I probably will not be here on the 23rd. There's a um, chorus concert. I think my son's in, so oh. I maybe have do to wanna, leave early wanna, or something like that. Do you want to change our meeting till the 22nd, Dave? Do you have? Do you know if you're working the 22nd? We could just change our meeting to the 22nd. Our, our meeting is scheduled yeah, the 23rd. You are working, mm -hmm. I think, the 23rd. I'm off the 24th, but I'm working the 22nd. We oh, have a yeah, but yeah, we have a select meeting. member's association yeah. meeting on the 24th. Yeah. yeah, we also have a need to do the sewer rate setting here. We do. So I know that's to down do that on a little bit further on the 23rd. On the 23rd. Well, yeah. the next meeting. Yeah. So then um, well, why maybe don't we, we do we a 5 o'clock meeting. I was just going to say, why don't we do a 5 o'clock? Mm -hmm. Sewer rates are pronto you know to get done and then we could we could do this at five o'clock yeah you know right after the sewer or earlier if you want even or yeah we could do the earlier i'm fine with earlier i don't have anything well, um i just can't work. i'm i'm uh now richard when i was kind of bruising through the bylaw that you proposed um my interpretation of mac manufacturing was that you were going to be looking to maybe produce edibles at the location yes we will be producing, it'll be extraction and making of products. So it's, it's okay. Yes. So it, we'd it, want to know what you so be, were making. And we, making will, we will provide you with great detail. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. You're dating yourself with brownies. I, that's, that's what I hear. I don't know. <laughs> um, we can meet, I can meet, or it's early. Has um, it. <laughs> I, I can, the earliest I can meet is 3.30, though, because I'm I've on that. work, so I mean, it'll have to be 5. You know. Oh, okay. No, that's fine. Yeah, okay. I have that um, Selectman's Association nominating committee oh. that I'm on till oh, 3 o'clock. Oh, for the state. Yeah, okay. till 3 o'clock. All right. So, um, but I can do that after. So if you wanted to say five. five yeah. And that way. Um, five on the 23rd. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do. And, and I'm sorry, that's for Five on the 23rd for, for, um, for our, that? well, so it'll be, um, we definitely have to set the sewer rates on mm -hmm. the 23rd. Mm -hmm. So we'll do um, that first. First. And mm -hmm. then, um, did you, uh, I'm a little confused as to what we'd be doing on the 23rd with the Board of Health stuff. I mean, it well, seems we like we'd want, have to we be. we want a complete, um, I want a, a complete discussion of what their operations are entailed. Like, Will you, you know. be prepared at yes. this time for that? We yeah. Okay, so I'd be happy to listen to that and then yeah. and just we've talked all we're looking about for is information yeah. and possible. Um, that way, Dick can come. We can just listen to anything that's possibly we might have to be on the hook Dick's for from meeting. a regulatory point of view. And then also because you're discussing what the complete operation is, that the planning board we can invite the planning board as well, and um, they can ask questions to the process. So. Maybe it would speed up the planning board issues. I think the planning board would be pleased with that too. They yeah. mentioned uh, uh, the other night that they they should probably come spend some more time with you. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, We're welcome to have them. So five o'clock on the twenty third. Yes. Yep. Yes. It will good. probably be more like five fifteen, but we'll sure. as soon as we set the tour rates, we'll um, talk to you. Sure. Well, that's great, and we'll be prepared. We'll come in with a presentation okay. with some people. And That'll be great. Give you a full uh, dog and pony show, if you will. Good. Good. Well, it's I think that's what we're concerned. You know, like I said, it's not really a concern. It's just a discussion of what samples. actually is going on because manufacturing sounds not. People need to be aware. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't sound that like a good really thing. So I, I hmm? just, if you just can discuss what you're doing, 
and how you're doing it, then I think people will be reassured that it's not a big deal. But we also need to know exactly what you're doing so we can figure out what our commitment is on a local level. And we'll try to find out some more information between now and the 23rd as well from the CCC. It's just, they're so disorganized. You don't get very much information from them. Hard to get a call back. I know. So please don't forget to take a vote, refer the bylaws to the planning board. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're gonna, okay, we we'll can. That. Is that done to Lisa yet? Yeah? Yes, yeah. she's reviewed them. Yes, yep, we, we had a, we um, just, yeah, she had first had a question about um, just the standing because in mm -hmm. 40A section five, you have to have a certain standing to present those, but and it's on behalf presented. of the landowner. So we've yep. clear, you know, clarified that. So and we're just yep. okay, moving that along to that. Yep. Yep. yep, we're just moving them along. So okay. I'll, take, I'll take a motion on that. Uh, I'm, I make a motion. We move um, the zoning um, changes along to the select board. For their hearing. I mean, uh, for the planning board for their hearing um, and the, I just want to verify what well, we're moving along the, um, the, we're changing the wording in the Deerfield, mm -hmm. within Deerfield for Correct. the, for the 500 feet. feet, 500 feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the main one that I want to make sure we're addressing. Well, this is what, There's uh, a few other. what we would be putting forth is I thought what, uh, Mr. Evans had provided yep. previously. Mm -hmm. yep. and, Yes, we just we're just going to be passing that, it on and they'll have their meeting and changes. we can come right. and comment on it or not. Yep. 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 Okay, good. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thank, you. thank you. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you very well, much. Well, thanks for thank coming you. tonight. Thank very you. nice I'm to meet you and welcome to Deerfield. Hang thank you. Happy to have you in town. Yep. Thank you. So next on the agenda would be the, uh, to vote the consent agenda, which consists of two uh, one-day liquor licenses, one for Gideon Porth uh, for the Atlas Farm October 19th for a fall festival. Sounds fun. And the one-day liquor license request for Yankee Candle Village for October 19th as well for the pumpkin ball. Um, um, did the parking get sorted out for Gideon? I mean... I assume if it's on this agenda, everything's been looked at and yes. good? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then well, I make I'm a good. motion we approve um, both the Atlas Farm request and the Yankee Candle request for October 19th. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. So uh, moving on to old business, vote to purchase land on Merrigan Way, AKA New, New England Natural Bakers. So maybe just an update of where we're at. Do we need, well, I don't think we need to take a vote on that. Do yes, we? you do. Oh, you we have do a because vote the town did? Okay. Uh, because now you are effectuating the vote of the town. Gotcha. So there's a vote actually in your packet that I'd like you to. Oh, you have to read it. it. Trevor, you have to read it. Read yeah. it. <laughs> you got it? Oh, okay. Oh, there it is, okay. So uh, this is the motion. I hereby move that the select board purchase the property identified as of approximately 9.2755 acres, plus or minus, plan book 140, plan 41, located off of Merrigan Way and owned by New England Natural Bakers by deed recorded in the Franklin County Register of Deeds, book 7183, page 121, for $357,280.00, pursuant to Article 9 of the September 30th, 2019 Special Town Meeting, and further authorize the Chair, Trevor D. McDaniel, to execute and enter into any and all documents necessary to effectuate the uh, purchase of the property from New England Natural Bakers, Inc., and or NEB Realty, LLC. Second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Do you need me to, you have, a, you have the permanent one there? Yeah, I'm gonna have okay. you just sign this one. I think I'm just gonna have Barb do a certified vote anyway, but I'll have you sign this just so she'll okay. the evidence. Perfect. Okay, so um, next under old business is update on the wastewater treatment plant secondary clarifier project bid opening and next steps. So what I gave you, um, oh. so 
So I provided um, just a couple of emails um, from from Dave Prickett's office on the um, kind of give an update on what happened with the bid. So we had one bid come in for repairing the clarifier, and uh, and because it was one bid, it was too high to begin with. So we have a couple of choices ahead. Um, so I'll just, as, as a follow-up to the bid opening of the secondary clarifier upgrades on September 27, 2019, uh, we only received one bid for the project and it was not within budget. Based on uh, bid results, we're evaluating four potential alternatives. So um, one of these may be moving forward a little more than the other, but so reject, uh, reject the bid and rebid the project with the current approach, which is kind of what we did. Reject the bid and separate the procurement for the clarifier mechanism and the temporary treatment, uh, one contractor and one vendor. So what's happened, I think is a lot of people are nervous about that kind of, I'll call it a heart bypass, but it's bypassing that secondary clarifier or the only clarifier and doing a temporary on track to trailer truck thing. I think that people, um, there were a couple of reasons why, the, why many people didn't bid this project and why the bid was so high. And they're very concerned about taking responsibility about doing that, that clarifier as a secondary clarifier, um, you know, as a temporary. Um, and they, um, so I, I, you know, so one option was to separate that out, maybe hire out a company to do just the bypass and we just go ahead and focus with just changing the clarifier. Um, so the other option would be reject the bid and explore alternative temporary treatment measures, including uh, town operations staff taking leading taking uh, the lead to uh, temporary treatment and utilizing existing tanks with potential short-term upgrades to make them oper operational. And I think that part... Is that pretty viable? It seems to be. Keith is working on that right now. And okay. he's putting that together to see if, if for some way we can, um, you know, utilize those rectangular tank clarifiers that we have now. The problem is, is that they don't take a heavy load or volume. So... The time, we really have to kind of do some homework, and, and I think that's what Keith's working on now. Can he get that for relatively short money, get those up and running so that we can use those as the temporary clarifier while we do the other one? How much, how much did the um, bid come in for the temporary bypass? They did, didn't, they, they did the whole thing. So we don't know what, what they would charge okay. for that, um, but I'm sure it was a significant amount of money. Dave's um, original proposal said it was around 350000 just for that. Mm -hmm. Could be, yeah. Right. I think that so, was what he so was talking about. I don't know what the actual bid was, but yeah. yeah. Do you think Keith will be able to come up with something that will He's viable? working on that right now, and I haven't had the phone call with him, but I talked to David today, and, and David said that he's moving in that direction, that, that we could get those maybe up and running, and then we can just go out to bid for specifically that. So if I had a couple of weeks or a week or so of time to let this play out, and see, I want to talk to Keith and see what help he, he would need. So... so um, I, w I would think just based on this conversation that we'd want to put it out to bid again, but separate. Possibly. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's the case. I think I would reject, I, my, my, my inclination is to reject the bid right now anyways, because we're not moving forward with a bid that's too high. It's just um, another reason why the, uh, not many people bid on this is some of the contractors, there's a lot of work going on right now, and this is a relatively small project. A million dollars is a lot of money to anybody, but... For contractors, this is not a big project, so they um, and and they also they have to get a bond every time they do a, a project. So if they are bidding on four larger projects and their bond, um, kind of like their credit card, how much how much is their credit rating? Can they take on larger projects? So if they take on too many projects, then they're overextended. So they were afraid if four of these jobs come in that they're bidding they would be overextended and wouldn't be able to take on our job. So I think, you know, it, we may be favorable if we separate out that other temporary bypass and just go back out for clarifier. Maybe we would get more, more people um, looking at just that. Might, they might just not want to deal with the hassle of the other thing, and they'll just change the clarifier okay. part. So, so I think in, in a week or so we'll have better answers on all that stuff. I well, just wanted since to we're meeting next week, why don't we just table this for now? Or we can reject the bid for now because oh, we know I, for I, sure. I know yeah, and then but you're right yeah. for the other decisions. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, it was, I think, 1.1 1. 1 something. It was 111. 111. So it was, about 111 it was probably a couple hundred was, thousand more than we were budgeting. I think we budgeted right. about a million bucks. Right, the base and bid, the and, base then there, bid. and then that didn't include the alternates. Yeah, we had so. we had three alternates. Like if we felt like if the bids came in pretty economical, we would kind of coat the cement and do a couple other things that we wanted to do, but it, it didn't. So um, the the last option was to reject the bid and wait. Uh, for the $11.4 million project no. to perform the work, which is approximately two and a half years. And, and they, they're just not going to last that long. That clarifier is already broken. So and that's the whole reason we have an emergency order to fix it. So I don't, and, and if, I don't see how God forbid, if something would... happened and we broke down and we were pumping all this stuff into the river, which I'm afraid of, um, you know, and, and it turns out that we didn't do this because of money, <laughs> We, they would not look favorably at us, and I think the fines would be rather large. So I think we can still move forward. I think it's just taking another crack at it a different way um, to hopefully get the cost down. It certainly wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't 300000 to fix this thing. So we, um, we want to come back at it, um, and hopefully maybe other people have got jobs or lost jobs, and more people will bid on it if there's less to do. And they don't have yeah. to take on this. Well, it's less complicated, treatment. maybe. It is. Yep. Well, and, um, and and we have, a, and I just feel like we could be able to do this for less than three fifty on the, you know, whatever. Oh, the temporary stuff. Possibly. Yeah. 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 You, you, I think we're we're leaning that way. So. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Okay. So I would take a, a motion to reject the bid uh, for I'll the project in current format. I'll make that motion. Um, I'll second it. Any further discussion? Mm. Um, I, I think we still should have further discussion with Dave about the big project. Yes. And oh, yeah. if we, oh, I have a ton of stuff to tell see you. See if we can get this going quicker. W yes, we need to get because, it going. Because, you know, if we can do away with it, the temporary, you know, um, then I think there should be enough money in the whole project to be able to put a dumping station for local. Well, we, we can, that, we can that, talk Those about are all that things sure. that we should be talking about mm -hmm. with him. I would love uh, to get, Because, yeah. you know, the way I was looking at it is if we could, you know, because of his original estimates of 350, mm -hmm. if we could do away with that and put it towards the, the dumping station, which is around 500, mm -hmm. that that would make sense. Well, let's, um, okay, so any further discussion on this vote? No. Nope. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so then, yes, I agree. We should definitely, um, I want to get um, a discussion with USDA. They're very anxious right now that we haven't moved forward with hiring uh, David to kind of get rolling. So I would love to get moving on that, but I wanted you guys to have a discussion first. So Diana's trying to line that up and we're hoping to have maybe their engineer here at our next right. meeting or next week or. Yep, whenever you say, we're we gonna try, try and to set get it up. Steve, is it Steve? I Steve, Steve yep. to get here to discuss that and well, Rebecca to talk you, about where we're going. What time do you go to work, Dave? I usually leave differently around quarter after five. So if we, um, could you make it like so we had a half an hour um, next week? Well, let's check with Dave. Yeah, but I, you mean for this process? Yeah, yeah. just um, have some discussion. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just you worried. You mean 4.30? Or what are you talking well, about? Well, I'm, I'm, if Dave leaves at 5.15, then if we could meet at 4.30 or quarter five. Actually, I can't have this coming Tuesday. Because I have to be at Thursday. work early. Oh, no, we're talking about next Wednesday, the... Well, you already said you were going to meet then at 4.30. Yeah, 4.30. You've yeah, already scheduled that. We can't fit anything else in there, yeah. can we? To vote your decision for, these, for the fuel storage. Yeah. And I want to That's have fine. more of a longer discussion. Yep. I mean, I would do another day, like a Thursday or something, but... We could do Thursday. The 17th for, for a sewer discussion. And I also Thursday, need a yeah. meeting with David and our, our working group. Uh, and yeah, we can't have make you the 17th. For that, but. Um, well, we can work on this. We'll, I'll get it figured okay. out and, and confirm okay. with you. We'll work through Diana to get a date that right. yes. Steve can get here. We Rebecca definitely can do. Have a discussion yes, I'd like get to get Steve, rolling. the USDA, yes. I'd like them to know we're moving along. So yes, the quicker exactly. we can get him here and, and we can start talking about plans and specs, the better. And I'll see what better. I can do for time and Dave's they will schedule. Feel. Okay. Lay it right. out, get it, get it going. So because we're not technically using any of the USDA funds for the million dollar project, right? Well, we're hoping to roll sort of it back. We wanted, yeah. to, we wanted to make that included, okay. so that we're using their money up front. Right? Okay. Yes. But let's have that discussion yes. with everybody to yeah. make sure Dave's in there. And, okay. Um, do, um, the other piece of information, just for your review until, and we'll talk about it 
maybe next week is the we need to set our, our sewer rates. Yes. So I, I had um, James and Dave Prickett put, put together kind of a discussion of where we would need to be based on the two different options ahead, which is the $19 million project or 11-4. I think if we're kind of probably leaning towards the 11-4 right now for the project because that's what we have the funding for. And so if we were going to raise our rates, um, I'll just read his, his letter. Based on our discussion yesterday, please find the attached table and figure for FY20 rate projection. Uh, they ran two scenarios, one for the $19 million project, one for $11.4 million project. Um, in order to avoid a significant rate increase at the end of the project, we, um, we project a rate increase of 10% per year between now and 2023 is necessary to cover the uh, projected debt service for the $19 million project or, or a rate increase of 5% per year from now until 23 to cover the 11.4. And I, I think, you know, I know we have quite a bit of um, money in retained earnings right now, but as soon as we start doing the project, that will get eaten up pretty quick. So I would be in favor of not 10%, but 5%. I because I don't, want to I don't want to have a year where it's just a dramatic jump, and I'd love to just, if we can just manage a, a smaller increase until we, we get done, and we know we're only focusing on the 11 for right now. Well, um, uh, I also think that the situation is going to change. We, it may. In 2020, we potentially, there yeah. could be infrastructure projects. And um, mm -hmm. I was going to go to that meeting in Waitley um, yes, me too. that Joe Cumberford is putting mm -hmm. together for sewer projects. So, I mean, I think. Let's if just stay with the five. Yeah, if we stay with the five yeah, percent, I mean, I'm not. I'm optimistic that we're going to be able to um, look at some other still solutions. do the 19 million, but we could. We're going to have other grant opportunities and well, if infrastructure they, changes. If USDA sees that we're moving forward and we're not just yeah. sitting around not so doing we, I mean, it, because we can I reapply for the we for can. another. In, and, and if we do this and for good partners in the next two or three years, then then our application will look really favorable. Absolutely. Rebecca and did say that she would fight for us if we are good partners and we're moving forward on this stuff. And I know, and that's why it's it's, it's all, important. It's all relationship based, mm -hmm. and it's also out hustling for different grants. Yep. And so if we can get, uh, uh, you know, going, so we have shovel ready things that we can just speed up. The design is important. Yeah, yes. to get that rolling. Right, and if we can speed it up, because as soon as the opportunity comes for uh, you know an infrastructure grant mm -hmm. or some kind of program, then we we could just we just put it, take it right there, and we right. would have really good opportunities. Yep, so, sounds good. Uh, so that was just for your okay. information to look at. We'll talk. About, you know, on the twenty third, we'd set the rate, but just I wanted to give you any information I had on that stuff, so we can chat about that stuff later on. Um, so uh, administrative and land use inspections office staffing would be the next kind of subject. I don't know if you wanted to give a yeah. update on where you're at on that. Um, yeah, we uh, interviewed uh, uh, three candidates today. Oh, great. Um, uh, one of the candidates was a no-call, no-show. I don't know if they, they ever got a hold of you. But, no. Um, no. But, uh, that was you one know, we were concerned it, about anyway, so it's not a big it, deal. Yeah, okay. but it's um, so. What I'd like to do is um, move forward with the uh, uh, reference checks. Mm -hmm. And uh, would Diana do those? Yep. 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 Wonderful. And uh, we have one candidate that I particularly liked. Um, Great. Uh, Going to meet with. Uh, uh, Barbara and um, Bob in the morning at 9.30. Okay. To talk about your selections on that? Talk about the selection and go from there. Wonderful. Oh, that's wonderful. So um, when do that. you think that they can be on board? And do they have availability well, um, issues? I, I assume anybody that, if they're currently working, uh, would at least give their employer a two-week notice. We'd love to see that. You know, uh, if they walk off a job to take another job. I don't know if we really want them here anyways. <laughs> so. so in the meantime, um, how are we handling uh, like planning board issues and stuff, Diana? 
Um, most of the planning board things have, um, Bob is actually was out this week, Monday, Tuesday, and part of today. So all of the um, items have been mostly coming into Pat. If they go across the hall to uh, Jen, uh, she has been delivering them to Pat. So we've received a notice of intent for the CONCOM. So we've passed that along to Louie. Um, we received some well permits. Um, so Excuse we've been managing the applications in our office at this time. Um, how about the planning board though? I mean, the planning board issues, like so the mailings and stuff. Yeah, so, well, we haven't gotten any applications, but I talked to John Waite this week, so he did tell me that they had voted on Monday night, that they had set four conditions for the decision, and he's giving me that information. So I'm going to draft the, the decision that they did for Monday night, and we'll make sure we get that reviewed uh, by what council. What decision was that for? They voted the, um, they closed the hearing and voted in favor of the revisions to the 198 Mill Village oh, okay. Road project. I was talking about the set Right, road mailings and stuff like that for the solar, the changes in the solar. I haven't, somebody else mentioned Set Right Road, Carolyn, but John didn't say anything to me <coughs> about Set Right Road, so I'll have to follow up on that. I yeah, didn't, can you follow up on yeah, it? Because um, he didn't mention that to me at all. He only I mentioned know that, that, that um, you know, that needs, the mailings need to go out and stuff like that. Is that a plan for the planning board? Not yeah, the there was con -con? a change. Okay. Um, I, I, w I was here vaguely. Okay. I'll check with John. On, on Monday night, um, I had come back from a, a Board of Health meeting up in Heath, and um, that was, I mean, we were discussing that. So. Okay. Yep. No, he just informed me that Paul um, was going to bring me in the four conditions that they had discussed for that decision and asked if I would um, write that. Oh, actually, he did tell me that Frontier Solar, I think that's it. So he did tell me Frontier Solar tentatively public hearing for November 4th, but they were going to let him know by the end of the week whether they were going to be prepared to come forward with those revisions. So he's okay. supposed to let me know by the end of the week. Well, can you check and follow I up? I will, because yes. And then we're just going to schedule required. it for, right, for November 4th is when yeah. you wanted to do it. Yep. So I just, you know, those kind of things need to get taken care of Why this person is not here. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, hiring plan, already select board and office staffing. Yes. So, so you would put something I gave together, you, yeah, right? I I'm just gave you put that. something together. Um, we have the, um, I gave you in the packet um, yep. just kind of a synopsis of what the positions are in the office right now. And Great. Um, I gave you the um, the grades and what the hiring ranges had mm -hmm. been typically when we'd been talking step one to step four. I did include step four. We had been mostly talking step one to step three. But I wanted to give you a sense of what those numbers were. Yeah. Um, because if as we go out back out to hire the assistant town administrator, um, you know, you can see that it, what, it we have, what we have. Yeah, where we, I mean, we have a budget, but but it doesn't align, you know, with the hiring um, numbers. And even if you look at grade five, yeah. um, you know, it, it's. It, can I ask a question? <laughs> sure. So, um, I I believe the personnel board is close to. Yes, yeah, so the personnel board has been scheduled. We're meeting October twenty first. Thank you. So we have a meeting. Um, so. so what I was wondering, and maybe you're already way ahead of me on this, is that we would look at that mm -hmm. position and maybe either look at regrading or see what, like we did with the... With the billing commissioner, exactly. Just, well, that's why I'm bringing you this thank information. Thank you. You're way ahead of me. <laughs> because we had, Carolyn had also, also asked me, um, we were going to post the assistant town administrator, and Carolyn had mentioned um, some things in the job description about adding, you know, yep. projects and things. So I also right. presented you a new updated job description. Okay. Um, I so changed, I, I didn't, um, I did it as a markup so you can see how I changed things. Oh, good. The essential functions I just relocated. I didn't yep. take them all out. I just moved them so they would be aligned with our other job descriptions. Okay. So they were all, had the same format. Yep. I've also attached the executive assistant and the Great. administrative assistant. Perfect. The administrative assistant is the job we're proposing to hire as the um, probably less than half time position that mm -hmm. we had just budgeted. Yep. And this position would mostly support um, the uh, the health agent, but would also support the administrative office. But would okay. take over some of that board of health responsibility um, that's falling to Pat. It would essentially fall to this person, and then any other available time, which would be limited, could help support mm -hmm. you know Pat as well. Okay. But you can see the job description, and I gave those to you so you could have, yeah, you know, if you had any feedback on it. Yeah, that'd sure. be great. I'd love yeah. to look at those over. But the That's plan great. was Thank to you. take sort of all of this to the personnel board as necessary on 
the twenty um, first on the twenty first and well then um, why do don't we put this on is? the agenda item for the sixteenth is just to review if we had any questions with this. Okay, okay that'd be great. Because I, I yep. um, yeah, give you time to look through it. Yeah, I'd love I, for I you was to gonna look say at I it. I didn't have a chance to look at it. I mean I yeah, wanna I make either. sure we're, we're talking about the project person. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly, Carolyn. I, I did take a few things out that I thought were more general and put in things more toward the projects and planning, but please do look and yeah, make sure I've and got everything in there. Okay. That's okay, so that's, are okay, we awesome. talking about then trying to get this posted after the 16th, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. I think yep. we should do that. I think yeah. we need to do it right. Yeah. yeah I exactly. think so. I'm, I'm very concerned about going out until we have a consensus on the yeah, hiring let's build of this it right. position exactly. just right. because we, we won't be competitive. And can, can we, as long as we're looking at the job descriptions for next week, so it's almost like a targeted meeting, can we, can we look at the town administrator's job too? I mean, cause sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, it's been a while since we really reviewed that one as Okay. Well. Yep. We'll review that too. In conjunction with the assistant. I mean, sure. Absolutely. Yep. See side how they by tie side. In. Yep. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Right. You just helpful. you just use that could you, one. Could you um, um, put a hard I copy in it, my but... box for tomorrow? A hard yeah. copy? What day yeah. do you have in that meeting? The sixteenth. Next Wednesday. That's our meeting. The twenty the personnel board meeting, David? Oh. Are you talking about or we wanted this for the personnel board. So yeah, if we do we this, yep. if we if we review this for a few minutes on the 16th, you know, if we look it over, and I wanted to look at the town administrators in relation to the changes to the assistant town administrator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good and idea. I can't. I gotta have a hard copy. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah, I'll give you one uh, right I can, after. I can. I can pick it up tomorrow after the state commission meeting when okay. I come back. So. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. So new business. We finally get a chance to thank Yay! Chris Harris. <laughs> Chris, thank you did you, Chris. a wonderful job, and I know you want to take a thank you too, but I just I, I can't thank you I, enough. Really, it was a very nice event. It was an awesome it was event. Really nice. So please, you have yeah, I know we've been kind of busy, and it's it three, is. It was it's three weeks since we had the event, we but missed um, every time. but I just wanted to thank the town and, oh. and specifically call out a few things because it was a pretty integrated approach to make this happen. And it actually was more than just the event on Wednesday the eighteenth. Uh, because Rock Merritt actually went into history classes at Deerfield Academy the prior day, yep. and he was at Frontier on the 18th, uh, and they set up in the auditorium. Yep. And he was very impressed by the students that he interacted with, the preparation, the questions they had. So a big thank you to um, Charlie Tebbets at Frontier, who coordinated that, and Kevin Kelly at Deerfield Academy, who Great. Coordinated with. He was um, a pretty amazing man. He was an amazing man. He really yeah, there's, there's several of them there's still a, with yes, us yes. in the 508 that are pretty impressive, each of them awesome. in their own right. Um, but actually, you know, this one goes back to April when we started with the idea of this commemorative historical sign for my uncle yep. on the 75th anniversary of his death, which was September 18th. Um, but uh, so it started with the select board reviewing kind of the technical approach and you know did it fit with the town et cetera yep. uh, and you guys supported me throughout as it morphed into a bigger World War II commemoration mm -hmm. and a bigger type of event um, but definitely Kevin Scarborough and his team did a great job because there were assessments that had to be done in terms of the safety of that sign from a visibility standpoint on both ends of yep. Child's Crossroad um, but also, we got into the whole dig safe thing, and there were technical issues sure. like that. And it came off really well in the end. Um, so big thank you there. And then surrounding the event itself, Chief Pachurik and his team did a great job. We came up with a plan for parking, not getting log jammed off of 5 and 10. Yep. Uh, and that seemed to work pretty flawlessly. Was I wasn't was really great. watching it that close, but it, it, it was Bay great. It was, it, was awesome. it was safe. No one had an issue, et cetera. Yep. Um, and of course, our local VFW did a great job during uh, during the the event itself, yep. um, and certainly getting the word out about it. Yeah. Um, so that, that was um, you know all the way around. It was pretty pretty impressive, and so I felt compelled to sit here publicly and thank mm -hmm. everyone because there were a lot of moving parts, and people did a fantastic job to support my family and me, mm -hmm. and to make sure that it turned out well. And I think. When we have the one hour video of it, there's people already expressed interest in seeing that yeah. that we're not able to attend. Yeah. And so uh, so in that sense we can have some movie hours somewhere set up fun. in a public venue. Yeah. And uh, and so it's still a learning experience for those that missed it live. 
Yeah. It was really a lovely evening, though. It yeah, I have to say, you, you did an amazing job. Your coordination and the way you, you worked with people and um, and your attention to detail. And uh, you just did a great job, Chris. It really and it was it multi-generational. Really, yeah, it was. There was so it was, many. It was, yeah. I got was, to eat um, a wonderful dinner, by the way. Yeah. I got to eat um, a great dinner sitting at the table with... The, with um, with all these veterans from all these different wars and just and you could see when they talked to me you know I would probing questions but when they talked to me about their experiences it's yesterday for them it's not you know for me it's a history kind of thing in my mind for them it's it's yesterday and their and the brothers they lost there and what they had to do and the sacrifices they made for this country and and um and for their brothers next to them it's you know you fight for your country but you fight for your brothers next to you and it was just impressive to, to talk to them and um and um, it's yeah and, it's and, nice and, to and we experience. tried to it was commemorating world war ii and, and that greatest generation yeah. of folks but the legacy link to today's active duty and the Absolutely. veterans, all the eras between. Yeah. I mean, we tried to make sure that came out. And it did. That they understood the gratitude was expressed over the generations. Absolutely. It was. It was, it was it a was great nice. job. Yeah, so, very well done. So yeah, and, you know, the following day, Thursday, we actually went up to the weekly uh, veterans lunch in Greenfield at the Elks Club to deliver leftover food. Oh, great. Because we set up an <laughs> assembly line so that people could take food home because we're not going to yes. throw that food out. That <laughs> no, it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and they nabbed, they nabbed Rock Merritt and Sergeant Major uh, Gutierrez to speak. Oh. And I was a little concerned because it was a pretty tiring week. They for, did a uh, long Rock. week. And yeah. so, but uh, they really enjoyed the talks, but, yeah. but we kept it to a minimum for Rock Good. for Good. The sake of his physical well-being, but um, no, it worked out really well. It was it was wonderful just, event. It was really incredible bringing it to life, history to life. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. I just mean, I, I had read a book about Margaret Garden, but I, you know, listening to him made it seem oh, so much. different. you're right there. Different. It was just great. You yeah. know, I mean, it was so great. just a big thank you to the town. Big thank you to you. Thank okay. you to, yeah, for thank you, you, to you for, for bringing it. Really I really nice. appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Thank that you very much. Okay. Good. Thank you, Chris. Um, last item here, receive recommendation. We did this uh, yeah. recommendation already. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see. So we do have uh, executive Do you want session. me to give you a, yeah, you give you a, a quick, quick report? Quick so we have report, a lot of and stuff. We'll yeah, I just want to. Be done. <clears throat> so we're working through the low, uh, solar landfill development. And as a, in fact, uh, Trevor, I have the land consent agreement that's part of the interconnection um, thing that I need you to sign before you leave tonight. So okay. that's been approved by Lisa. It's the All next right. step in our work with uh, Nexamp. We had a conference call with DEP this week with uh, Kevin as well was on it, or actually it was last week, and we updated them on the status and scope and talked to them about the road development and made sure right. there's no issues. So they're fine with the, the process as it's going along and with the uh, solar developers working on the road. There's no issue. Um, they would give us at least a year to, you know, figure out if we we're going to get the development built. And so okay. that that went really well. Um, today, I had a meeting with Julie Cowan from Mass Development. So we talked about um, the New England Natural Bakers. We talked a little bit about Channing Bee, about some of the other properties in town. We talked about some initiatives that Mass Development has that can help support the town. Um, so we're going to work together on some of that. Um, she, we have a South a South Deerfield Center promotion that um, that uh, Mass Development can help us uh, sort of take some next steps on. So she's right. willing to do that. And she um, is uh, sort of matchmaking us with uh, people that are interested in properties in town. So right. as you decide more what you want to do with your New England Natural Bakers property, mm -hmm. um, she has folks that are interested in properties, um, you know, in the region and would love to, to you know, connect us with those Great. folks. So That's it, wonderful. Thank you. Um, Thank you. The, uh, so basically we've reached, I think we're at a point where with our uh, EV chargers, at least we have determined that we are interested in having one in the Leary lot. Yeah. So I'm putting together um, basically the scenario of how we would proceed with that funding wise. There's okay. different funding sources, but they kind of all have to be put together in a packet and then what the gap will be if there right. is one that the town has to come up with. So, okay. um, because we just, I haven't heard any more on whether Frontier is going to proceed or whether mm. the elementary school is going to proceed. And uh, I don't want to hold it up, so yeah. I just want to go ahead yep. with the, e no, the, the EDIP application or yep. e EVIP application. 
um, the ADA application went in okay. um, for that grant. Um, I also had asked uh, Eversource during our meeting, and I've been communicating with them regularly, but they are providing a new updated quote on our LED streetlights as well. Good. So, cause we good, because we still have that you, pending you, project. You, put you in touch with yes, Paul again, yes, right? Yes, okay, good. yes, and yep, Paul has good. given us an amount, you know, of sort of what our, um, what we would need to have to sort of start that project. Yep. I mean, there is no cost on behalf of the town, but you know, you, when you get into it, you know, you are there is, gonna, yes, yeah, absolutely. So, yep. um, the, um, as you, the you timeline, a, does the, the timeline fit to our budgeting season? For the LED stuff? Yeah, because we hope, have to, I'm we, hoping that you're gonna ha we'll have some information in the well, next. Yeah, because we'll at need least to put it into at least put a hold, a hold uh, an application in with a hold um, for the CIPC. Capital. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Yep. Just, you yeah. Know, yeah. We By can December. use the old, yeah, we can right. use the old quote. Right, and then yes. see what know, gets updated. For sure, yep. yeah. Yep, that's so plan. speaking of CIPC, so I am working with them and we've scheduled a meeting for tomorrow night. So okay. um, they have a draft letter that will be going out to department heads and um, requesting that the materials are back December 1st and they're gonna just review you know, their materials great. tomorrow night preliminarily. And that's we'll get great. those things out to department heads. Um, as you, we already talked about, the personnel board has scheduled a meeting, and that yeah. is coming up on Monday the 21st. Um, I am still looking for one person for personnel board, if anyone is interested. We have a great group. Yes. Um, I have reached out to a few people that have said thanks, but they're, they're pretty busy, so mm -hmm. if anyone has some time. Um, we had uh, the Greenfield Savings Banks donated an elm tree. Um, that uh, Snows and Sons is going to plant at the Bloody Brook Monument. Um, okay. Kevin has identified that spot, and we've contacted DigSafe, and that tree will be planted, I think, sometime next week. They have a certain period right. after DigSafe. Well, it. nope. It's going to be an elm tree. It's, um, a, it's a resilient kind. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not, not uh, the old elm. Yeah, it's not the old American elm. It's, okay, it's a hybrid. I thought you said elm, and I'm thinking, what? <laughs> no, 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 it's a hybrid. I don't they, hear it too well sometimes. There's supposed so. to be no spot elm. on Elm Street for it? Mm -hmm. um, elm tree. Yeah, it will be re disease yeah. resilient. Uh, da, 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 da. Chestnut too, then. Mm. Uh, we're working on the MVP reporting for September. Chris uh, Curtis and I, we've gotten some. Uh, and we have a, a meeting set for um, the Next 15th week. at one o'clock for our steering committee. Yeah, for our working group. And I did, um, as sort of a coincidence, I think I've been reaching out to Mass Development, but I had gotten a, a reach back from Covestro and from Mass Office of Business Development. So they are um, now working more formally with Waitley, um, moving that process forward. So, um, okay. you know, Dedick's meeting tomorrow and I'll update great, Paul great. and, and keep them in the loop. Ralph Healy is um, the liaison for that and he'd stopped in last week, we talked. Okay. Um, and then just I'm working on some operational things, um, some enforcement issues locally in town around some policies. We're trying to figure out how to do, you know, cohesive enforcement on, on some things. Um, and then I'm trying to help the planning board as they are short staffed right now as well. And of course to support this office. So um, right. I have a call in to district two as well, I'm trying to schedule, yes, a, so you. trying to get to the right person I to get yes. a meeting with district two. Um, so I'll keep you posted on that as well. Great. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll um, I was going to say, if you have too much of a trouble, get will have Sarah talk to her father. Yes, I just Please. found that out. Yes. I just found that That'd out from Pat That'd mentioned that when he stopped in the office this week. And yeah. I was like, thank you. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes. FU was here yesterday. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, I saw him too. I didn't realize that though yesterday. Now I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, that'll conclude you know, our public uh, meeting and uh, we're going to enter into executive session and I'll read that. We'll, when we adjourn from executive session, we will be adjourning the meeting. So we'll not be coming back to public, uh, public meeting. Uh, so pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 21B, Paragraph two, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, police chief contract, and pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 21A, Paragraph six, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property if the chair declares an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body, recreation, general municipal purposes. Um, which so, you do. Which you I do. do, so I would entertain. Um, Make the motion. Uh, any further discussion?